What's happening, everybody? How's it going? Is everybody doing well tonight? What's happening, everybody? Volume sounds good. What's up, DieCast fam? It's good to see you guys. Um, it's been it's been a pretty long week for work. Lots of hours. Um, been working a lot lately. Haven't really had a chance to sit here at all for customs or anything. Um, <laughs> Danny, define well. <laughs> in good health, finding stuff. Uh, family affairs in order, things of that nature, gas in your car, money in your pocket, at least a little bit. That's what I'd define as well. So anyway, guys, welcome to DieCast Discussion number 95. I'm your host, Derek, a.k.a. Honest DieCast, but collectively we are all Honest DieCast. Striving for a better DieCast community that's about the cars, not the money. If it's your first time here, Welcome. Seeing a lot of familiar faces. It's good to see you guys. Uh, Susan saying hello. What's up, Susan? Good to see you. Uh, Tony in the house. What's up, Tony? Paul Morales says, Sally, what's up, Paul? How you doing? There's Andre, Empire, uh, Inland Empire Rail fan. What's up, man? How's it going? Did you get your EGs yet? Or no, I just sent them. Yeah, it's probably going to... Probably by Tuesday or... Wednesday, I think you'll have them. Uh, Stefan, what's up? So what are you guys finding? What's what's new? What's cooking? What's cracking? What's crack a lacking? Uh, here, it's been a rough, honestly, probably since I think the end of October. It's been pretty rough hunting. All of all of November was just not great. It was not that good at all. And this week, this week was good. This week was good, finally. I'm eager to show off some finds with you guys. Um, hunt episode, probably tomorrow. Probably tomorrow. I'm going to be working on it tonight. Get it up tomorrow. It's been a month. It's been a month since the last hunt episode. I'm way overdue. Uh, Kevin, what's up, buddy? Good to see you. Says, hey, Derek, what's up, Kevin? There's Steve from Miniature Mustangs. What's up, brother? How's it going? Sally66, staying. First time here. What's up? I've seen I've seen you floating around, so thank you, sir. For, I appreciate you for, for joining. Leakmaster5000, Jorge Delgado in the house. What's up, Jorge? Hope all is well over there. There's Jesse's Diecast Garage. What's up, brother? NC Diecast UK, what's up, buddy? Good to see you. I don't think I've seen you for a little while, so thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you. Nitro Diecast, what's up? BJ, sup? But yeah, what are you guys finding? Um, so what news do I have for you guys? Uh, 2023 A case is starting to hit Safeways. So check your Safeways. Check your Safeways. You'll see it on this episode. Um, I decided to take it out of town uh, road trip just on a whim. Didn't find anything on my route except when I stopped by Safeway. They had dropped two fresh uh, sidekick shippers with 2023A. Uh, none of the Batman Super Treasure Hunts, none of those. Uh, found a couple of the Raging Express regular treasure hunts. A lot of T-Birds, some Porsches, some black uh, S15 Liberty Walks. Um, so, yeah. Excuse me. Definitely check your Safeways for that. Um, I, apparently, Walmart's getting a bunch of AN. So, if that's your thing, definitely go check Walmart's. Uh, what else? Kroger getting Q. Kroger's getting Q. Q case. So, keep your eyes out on your Kroger's. And... Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. The Kroger's also are getting the newest, the latest and greatest Matchbox mix with uh, my beloved. Turn the finger just right. <laughs> my beloved Porsche Chase. 
So did find another one of those again. I will show you. So that makes two found. And uh, yeah, very good. This is Honest Diecast. Meg's 27 says, clap, clap, clap. Hello, love. Uh, Seahawks won, so she's in a great mood. <laughs> What's up, babe? Uh, Paco, what's up, brother? Good to see you. I saw somebody say your name. I was like, where's Paco? Where's Paco at? Uh, e. Thomas, uh, found another Skyline Super a couple days ago. Nice, man. Congrats. Yeah, still, I've only still found one out in the wild this year. That's a tough one. I won't be mad at all to see any KKs making this, making redrops. I'll tell you that right now. Definitely not. Um, also, our Krogers are starting to get lots and lots and lots of JKs. A lot. A lot. I am talking four plus dump bins and psychic shippers full of J. Um, did come across some today. I'll go over what I found. And uh yeah, so guys, keep your keep your eyeballs out. <clears throat> Midnight Diecast Project. What's up, brother? I'm tuned in. Finally got to catch the beginning. Nice. How's this time work out for you over there? Gary, what's up, brother? Pigs are not happy in Michigan. <laughs> Sorry to hear, man. There's Superbird Diecast. Meow. Uh, Superbird, I've been seeing you in the chats a lot lately on uh, Whatnot. Tried saying hi to you, but I didn't see. Uh, I don't think you saw me, but been seeing you on there. Been seeing Mr. Jimmy a lot on there. What's up, Mr. Jimmy? Shout out to you if you're if you're not here and you catch us later. But shout out to you. We always get it cracking in the chat. And um, yeah, I've been on whatnot a lot lately. It's kind of a new addiction. Uh, not that I'm buying everything that's going up. Uh, just going slow. But I did get my first uh, two boxes of purchases from one seller. And I'll go over that shortly. Um, yeah, it's it's addicting. Anybody that I've talked to that has decided to go over there and try it out has said it's absolutely addicting. And it's not the fact that you're just going there buying a whole bunch of stuff, but some of the stuff that you see getting put up and for crazy prices. And some of these guys, I've ran into multiple uh, charity auctions on there, which is really, really cool. Uh, Phoenix Diecast ran, ran one, and I'm trying to remember his username. I was on there yesterday. It's I think it's AC underscore 2103 or something, something like that. Um, but they did a charity event, and they raised a lot of money, um, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, kind of a newfound addiction. <laughs> it's just crazy seeing some of the stuff go up. So Some stuff you didn't even know existed. Um, but yeah, we'll talk more about whatnot in a little bit. Uh, Leander, what's up? Just found the Porsche 911 GT3 Maxbox Super Chase in my local dollar and a quarter tree. Nice, man. Yeah, I've been hitting our local ones and I haven't seen any, any signs of the latest mix of Matchbox, but maybe this week. So it might be worth checking. Adrian, what's up, brother? I don't know if you went live today, but I missed it and I apologize. But what's up, my friend? There's Steph and Victoria. What's up? Hopefully you guys get your package soon. If you didn't get it today, you should get it Monday or Tuesday. <laughs> Super for Jack Shoot. Jack Shoot. Uh, Tony's saying what's up to Superbird, but believe it or not, Dom is not Superbird's name. Superbird will not reveal his real name. So we call him Superbird. That's all we call him. <laughs> but yeah, we saw the name pop up and we all thought it was Dom, but it's not. I forgot who Dom is uh, relative to Superbird. But uh, Kevin Coons just got the RLC Chase Camaro. Nice, man. So let's talk about that for a second. On whatnot, a lot of people were putting those up for auction. Um, you know, starting for pretty good prices on most of them. Um, but a lot of people have the chase, but not a lot of people have the regular. So I'm telling you guys, for you guys that have gotten that RLC Camaro, if you got the regular one, don't be too mad because Mattel might've pulled a fast one on us. They might've gave out more of the, the foil cards 
than the regular cards. So in reality, when you look down the road and we figure out we figure out a good ratio of how many people got the regular card and how many people got the tin card, the regular card might actually be the chase. <laughs> Cuz I'm telling you guys, I was watching somebody's I was watching somebody's auction on whatnot and he had ordered like four of them, you know, whatever. He had ordered like four of them. He opened all four of them. I think he might have got one regular one and three chases. So, and it's appearing it's appearing to me that it's very common to get the foil card. So, you guys, if you guys got the regular carded one, don't be too mad because I'm telling you, I think Mattel might have pulled a fast one on us and issued more foil cards than regular cards. Just a hypothesis. Just saying. Riley. Hello, Riley. Good to see you. How you doing? Are you still customizing? And how's your dad doing? Good to see you, Riley. Uh, Empire. Uh, Andre. Found the Batman uh, Arkham Knight ID chase for two bucks at a flea market. Nice. Uh, solid, I guess. Unfortunately, I sinned and bought a super for 35 bucks. That's not terrible. I mean, which, you know, which super is it? Did it just come out? Is it pretty old? What? Which one did you get? Paco, 12 likes only. Come on, guys. Thanks, man. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, Superbird says, I heard B is also at USA Walmart too. Nice. I did not know that. Actually, I did know that. Uh, one of our Facebook group moderators in our group chat, he sent a picture of a pallet, and it had a bunch of B on it, which is crazy. So here it comes, guys. It's coming in hot. Uh, Stefan, what do you guys think about Amazon black boxes? I like it. I think it's cool. Some people think it's thinking it's ruining the hobby. I don't. I don't think it's ruining the hobby. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, Sue Bird, if you find any more extra Porsche Super Chases, let me know. Will do, sir. Yes, I will keep looking for them. I will keep looking. Uh, NC Diecast UK, everyone hit the like button for my man, Derek. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. I appreciate that greatly. Tony, what's up, brother? Brother. It says, smash that thumbs up, everyone, please. <laughs> Lamont, what's up, man? I uh, found quite a few uh, Porsche chases so far. I'm in love with them, man. Nice, nice. Yes, it is a very nice, very nice. It is a very nice. You know what else is a very nice? Freaking drilling them and wheel swapping them is very nice. <laughs> yeah, for those of you guys who haven't checked it out, yes, I did drill one. I did swap one, slam it. Detailed the front a little bit. Detailed the inside a lot. Probably see the harnesses in there just barely. White roll cage, exhaust pipes. Still got to finish detailing the bottom, but that'll get done. But yeah, it came out really good. I likes it. I might even do another one if I find enough of them. Yeah, perfect roller too. Show us your Porsche chase. I just did, Paul. <laughs> I'll show you another one, though, here in a second, here in a few minutes. Uh, Steve, find a lot in my mailbox from those whatnot auctions. Nice, man. Nice. Do you still have, do you have the same name on whatnot? Because I'm trying to look for people, trying to look for people that I recognize on there, and I'm starting to see more and more people coming over. Excuse me. Greg, it looks like you were hitting the Kroger's heavy, but probably today. 18 boxes of Q case, no soup. Yeah. Dry cases, man. Kroger getting dry stuff. And um, I'll tell you about my my hunt today. I found some stuff, but man, it took it took some work. <laughs> it took some work. Big A's Niners won too. Congratulations to your division. Leading 49ers. Yes, our Seahawks uh, squeaked out one today, which was nice. It was good. Uh, Vic, what's up, brother? How's things on your side of town? Uh, you find any extra Audi Supers? Probably the last one in the Lambo I want this year besides the premium chases. Nice. Yeah, I still have not found. 
I have not found any any of the Audis. I need I need N and P. I need one Audi, one Audi carded, one Ford carded, and one Camaro Q case, which I found. I found one right there. Um, I need one of those loose, and then I'll have all the supers. But um, but yeah, we thanks to somebody. I'll go over this in the mail call. Thanks to somebody, we completed our super chases for the year. So I'll go over that. Uh, Sally sixty six staying. What's up? Uh, I think I've seen you on there too, haven't I? Haven't I seen you on whatnot? I think I'm not sure. I like mine older uh, Mustang vintages on whatnot. Yes, yeah, so I have. I think I have seen you. Yeah, that's a it's a great place, guys. Like, um, you know, of course you got your bad apples on there. I've I've tapped into quite a few streams that made me cringe pretty bad. Um, and um, but for the most part, there's a lot of good people that start stuff off really, really low on there, really low. And like I said, you can find some really old, really off the wall, crazy rare stuff on there. Um, it's a great platform. I'm, I'm a fan. I'd have to say I'm a fan. Uh, Gloria, what's up? Saying what's up, Derek? How's everyone doing? Doing well. Hope you are doing well as well, Gloria. Hopefully you are finding some stuff. Uh, Paco, Derek and those mini GT are working on my brain bad. <laughs> Well, if that's the case, you might not want to watch here in probably about 15 or 20 minutes because <laughs> I'm going to add to it. <laughs> uh, Paul, still haven't pulled the trigger on whatnot yet. Yeah, man, just make an account, go on there, and um, yeah, just browse. Um, you know, I, I don't know if we're friends on Facebook or whatnot. Um, not whatnot, but I don't know if we're friends on Facebook or any other place. Uh, worst, case, worst case scenario, you can send me an email. And um, I'll toss out some stores that I follow pretty closely on there and uh, that I think are good. Um, so, yeah. I need to start making a list of the ones not to pay attention to, though, <laughs> for sure. Uh, Riley, my dad and I haven't been hunting, but still hoping to run into you. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, honestly, I haven't been out hunting nearly as much as I as I have been in the past, just due to my work schedule. But um, yeah, Sundays and Mondays, I try to get out there a little bit. I'd rather not go down another rabbit hole. Well, come on, man, it'll be fun. It'll be fun, Andre. I found a Boulevard case with the set that has the black forerunner. Okay. Uh, grabbed it to help two friends keep their Boulevard set current. Other than that, not much. Nice, man. And I'll tell you what, guys. I do not know what is going on with these premium Boulevard forerunners, but they are going for big money. <laughs> I just, I'm mind blown. I was like, I can't believe people are paying that much for that thing. Like, oh God, it's just a common premium, but, you know, it's... It's crazy. But yeah, I feel very fortunate to, to get the last two Boulevard sets knocked out. It was, it was very nice. Superbird, that's what it looks like. There's there's more uh, there's more foil cards than regulars. That's what it's looking like. So I'm saying, I think Mattel's play, playing a game on us with that one. I think. Uh, Jesse's saying we began B, N, and M. Nice. Very nice. There's Chad, it easy dude four. What's up, Chad? Saying hello. Uh, Joseph, uh, I found the new 1932 Ford Coupe Matchbox Super Chase already. Nice, man. Nice. Yeah, and a head start. Oh, in Australia. Okay. That makes sense. I'll tell you what, it looks like you guys, you guys are getting the the boxed power grabs. You guys are finding a lot of chases over there. One of the uh, one of the Aussie buddies found the Porsche uh, power grab chase in there. That was sick, man. BJ, are you getting the new chaser? Uh, yeah, I want to get a whole bunch of them. <laughs> um, I don't know how long they're planning on running the sale for for the Elite Six Four, but hopefully, hopefully it goes a couple days because I'm planning on picking a couple up. Uh, 
Uh, Paul, what does everyone think of Elite Six Four? I personally love the first car. I love. I've always wanted Hot Wheels to come out with a JZX100 Chaser. Uh, I'm such a huge fan of that car. I'm actually thinking about purchasing one in the future, like a real one, a one-one scale. And um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm I'm excited for that one for sure, 110. Um, percent I think it needs a wheel swap and a slam, though. <laughs> so you you already know I'm gonna pick up a couple. Uh, Joey Eli, what's up, man? He's saying what's up, Derek. Uh, Hot Megatus, what's up? The flat black Porsche 911 GT3 in 2023A is fire. Yeah, yes, it is. Yeah, it's also in 2022Q. Also in 2022Q. Uh, Cody Collins, what's up? Uh, what's going on, everyone? Welcome Sunday, Sunday, Super Sunday night, nice, man. <laughs> Thank you again for your outrageously generous mail call the other day, or uh, last episode. Uh, Lamont, yeah, you've been killing it, dude. Uh, Dollar and a quarter tree has been very good to me, man. Three SVO Supers at once and a bunch of Porsches. Nice, man. Nice. I, I hope that MBX wave hits us this week. I hope. I hope. I'm definitely going to swap one or two of them. Yeah, do it. <laughs> do it. Slam gang. Slam gang. Do it, Lamont. Come on, buddy. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Yeah, there's a lot more than meets the eye to this one. I actually, 1K, 1K cleared this one. I don't know if you'll be able to see the difference, but I could see the difference. I could see the difference uh, in person. Yeah. Yeah, you could see the shine. Yeah. It's a good mod to do. It's a good mod to throw some two, some one or some two K clear on on top. And um, the tampos, the tampos are very strange on this. Um, I can't tell because you can you can physically feel them, and it's it's hard to tell if they just put down a really really light coat of clear over it, or if they put it on over the over the clear. I mean, honestly, it kind of looks it kind of looks to me like they put them over the clear. It's hard to tell. But yeah, a nice fatty layer of 1K or 2K does that thing some good justice. Uh, Andre, much needed upgrade to the chase. Nice. Thanks, man. Yeah, I got I got the wheels. I'm not gonna throw the wheels away. Um I don't know. I'm thinking that these wheels would look pretty cool on something Euro or Maybe even domestic, you know? I'm not sure. Sorry, I got something in my eye. Yeah, but I mean, it's not a bad wheel. It's a cool wheel. It's a cool wheel. I kind of, it would have been nicer if they spaced these wheels out a little bit more because they're kind of sunken in there. Oh, another big upgrade you can do, Lamont, if you're going to swap one, is check out the front lip. So yeah, obviously gray base on both of them, but paint that front paint that front lip like a satin black. It comes out really good. Makes it look a lot more aggressive. Just saying. Hashtag just saying, that's all. All I want for Christmas is that Porsche Chase, no pun intended. <laughs> Tony says, love it. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, that's only uh, that's only the second or third chase I've ever drilled, ever. Jay, yo, 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 welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. What's up, buddy? How's it going? GTCS on whatnot. I'm not sure what you mean, Steve. GTCS. GTCS. I'm having a brain fart. Yeah, I'm not sure what you mean. Aaron, what's up, buddy? Saying hello. Very happy for you guys to be checking in with me on this Sunday. I was actually meaning to go on at 5. It just didn't happen. I was going to go on a little bit earlier. Uh, MDP, I'm go going crazy for not finding the 22B Subaru white color. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, that one has been tough. I've ran into multiple end cases where it just wasn't in there, period. And um, yeah, it's a it's a good regular treasure hunt. Probably my personal favorite out, out of the year. Excuse me. Andrew said, I just completed this year's 2020 Super Treasure Hunt. Today I found the Nissan Skyline. Nice, man. Congratulations. Jeremy Lance, what's up, brother? Thanks for checking in. Everybody wish uh, wish Jay ha uh, safe travels. He's heading to North Carolina for the holidays and, uh, yeah, some other things that I'm not at liberty to say. <laughs> Sammy, what's up, brother? Thanks for checking in and saying, yo. What's up, Sammy? If you have not subscribed to Sammy at 713, please head over there and check him out. Uh, Smokey, how many different go-kart casts are there? That's a good question. That's a good question because I'm not into collecting the go-karts, but maybe somebody in the chat, if any of you guys uh, collect the go-karts. Yeah, Smokey70 is wondering how many uh, how many different ones there are. Yeah. Yeah. Scalper's going for four runners like mad. Yep. Yep. Uh, Tony says, what not could be addicting? Yes, it can be. And it is. It is. It is. I tap. Uh, so if you don't know what I do for a living, I operate heavy equipment. Um, so I'm in a I'm in a piece of equipment all day running it so I can listen to the radio. And uh, yeah, I just I just plug my phone in and let whatnot auctions play and listen to some of my favorite, uh, some of my favorite guys on there do their thing, you know. Uh, Vic wasn't the white forerunner the first casting, and this recent was the recolor. Yes, correct. Uh, so two only so far, both premium. Yes, and both highly sought after, and just nuts, nuts. I've only found two of each. And that's all I needed. That's all I needed. I just need one for my uh, Boulevard collection. And uh, I gave the second one to my wife because she actually really likes the Forerunners. It's one of her one of her dream mobiles. Uh, Lamont, it's because everyone doesn't get Boulevard and then your store might get one or two boxes ever, if at all. So you're just left with eBay and people taking advantage. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. Okay. Can you get her in order, whatever she's doing? Uh, Jeremy, man, I have no clue why that forerunner is so sought after. Dang, I can't, I can't find Boulevard sets to save my life. Yeah, tell me about it. Um, yeah, Phoenix Metro just completely drained of Boulevard. Like, I might have, I might, might have found one or two of the Boulevard cards I needed this year at local WalMarts. Every other one. Has been out of town very far away. Yeah, that too. Yeah. You're even charge her 15 bucks for that Mach 1. Yep. Yep. And it's a nice casting, but man, come on, man. <laughs> come on. Eddie G in the house. Q Harmonica. What's up, Eddie? Uh, Superbird going for the chase and waiting the Liberty Walk Aventador too. Nice. Uh, BJ, I have school nine through four, so I can never get RLCs. That's why you take a bathroom break. <laughs> take a bathroom break. Like, man, my stomach's killing me. I got to go. Man, this guy's got to go to the bathroom at friggin' this time every Tuesday, man. What the hell is going on? <laughs> Hector, what's up? Mucho grande amigo. Late, but still like. <laughs> amigo, king of supers, the one. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Uh, just scrolling through chat. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll do. Uh, Sean, I can see it. The one you swapped is shinier. Yeah, man. That 1K comes out good. 
Uh, hey, yo, I think your turtleneck needs starch. Come on, man. Why are you climbing my turtleneck, dog? There ain't no turtleneck. It's one of those uh, one of those skinny boy hoodies. <laughs> oh, man, I need a haircut, like, so bad. Jeez. Yeah, as you can see, I shaved off my Movember face do. Um, but, yeah, the hair still needs to go. <laughs> Andre, see you next. <laughs> uh, hi, yeah, yeah. Cecil, what's up, man? How's it going, Cecil? There's Eddie Simple G, or uh, Eddie Simple Customs, Eddie P from Simple Customs is what I'm trying to say. Danny, what's up? Saying hi. Let's try to get caught up with the chat, guys. Uh, Adam, found one of those super treasure hunts in a 20 pack. Nice, brother. Nice. Nice. Yeah, it's um it's becoming more and more regular to find regular treasure hunts in nines and twenties. They're trying to reel you in. They want you to spend that money. Yikes. Sheesh. BMW box set reselling for 60 bucks. Yeah, okay. Yeah, all righty then. <laughs> Uh, Paco says, I need a black forerunner. Keep my eye out. If anybody else wants to keep their eye out as well. Yeah, it's actually dark blue. Yeah, that forerunner is actually, it's a really, really dark blue. It's nice. It looks, it looks really good. But it ain't no 30, 40, 50 bucks. It, <laughs> I've seen it going for, it's crazy. I will get to that very, very shortly, MVP. Watch. Watch. Hold my beer. <laughs> I'd buy a 9 or 20 if there's a super in there. That's what they need to do. Yeah, and that's happened before as well. Uh, Brandon from Live, Live or Diecast, uh, he found a Shelby 2021 sh uh, Q case, Shelby Cobra super in a 9-pack, which is pretty cool. And he's not the first one, which is crazy. Um, all right, I'm caught up. Let's change the banner. All right, let's go over some mail calls. I got a mail call from Brandon. Uh, and I got a I got two boxes consolidated into one uh, from my first whatnot purchases. Super excited to show you guys that. And uh, then I'll go over fines real quick. And uh, hopefully by that time, I'll have my special guest ready to come on. So, mail call from Brandon. Mail call from Brandon. All right. So, thank you, Brandon, for doing this. If you guys remember a couple live streams back, I mentioned that I had a trade lined up for one of my spare Merc super chase or one of my Merc premium chases that said it was going to be a while before it got done and it got done so uh Brandon thank you so much and what did I trade it for I traded it for the only the only premium chase I haven't found yet and one of my favorites yes sir Yes, sir, Bob. Freaking phenomenal. I love it. I love it. Um, God, it's... I know what some people may, might ask me. Some people might ask me, what's your favorite premium chase of this year? And I'm telling you guys right now, it's probably a three-way tie. It's probably a three-way tie right now between the Skyline the C8R in this. In this. Uh, Countach is nice. The Merc is nice. But they're just black. There's really nothing to them. Uh, but yeah, these... C8R, e ER34, or Ascenza. Definitely going to be the favorites. So, I got to pick one. I got to pick one. And I will. I will. But yeah, thank you, Brandon. Appreciate you, buddy. 
Um, your Merc Chase is on the way. You should be getting it, I think, Wednesday or Thursday, I think, if I remember right. So thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Um, all right. Now, he said three-way, huh? <laughs> Adam. <laughs> he said three-way. <laughs> all right. Yeah, let me go over my first acquisitions from Whatnot. All right. These things are phenomenal, and you wouldn't believe, you would not believe some of the prices that I got these for. So, all of these are from Diecast Z. Diecast Z. They are probably, they're probably one of the top sellers on whatnot. I think, I think they've been on there for like two years. And, um, They've been on there for like two years, and I think they've sold over 40,000 items, if I heard Caesar right. Caesar is the guy who usually does uh, the whatnot auctions. Um, so, yeah, shout out to Diecast Z, all you guys there. I love, I love your guys' auctions. You guys cut some people some really good deals. Don't really see them taxing people like way over market for stuff. Um, but, yeah, I like them. I support them. I'm going to keep buying stuff from them. because. They're good people. They put up good stuff, and their starting prices are actually very, very good. Um, they did include some stickers, which is pretty cool. So I forgot the I forgot the chassis code of the ninety nine two thousand four door, but that's pretty cool. Uh, Lamont says I've been loving diecast these auctions, man. Yeah, they're good. They're very, very good. They're very entertaining. They go for a long time. Little Miata. That's pretty cool. And then I definitely like this one because you guys know these cars have a special place in my heart. Evo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Evo. Very nice. Thank you for the free stickers. Yeah. Um, I like these guys so much that I might actually send them something. Hopefully they accept packages at their same address that they ship from. Um, but I might actually send them something. So, anyways, first up, won this for a really good price. I don't remember how much. I think maybe three bucks. Porsche 934 RSR. That'll go into the custom stash, of course. You guys know that I love doing those customs of those. I think this was another $4 car. The 997 GT2 in red. And I didn't mean to check. I don't have this one. I don't have this one, and it's on a very good car, too. So, yeah, that'll go. This one will be hung up. This one will not be custom stash. And then I think another $3, $3 car. Magnus Walker 934 Turbo RSR. Again, this will go into the custom stash, the custom supply. And then on to the other stuff. I think I'm planning on getting all of the different colors of this uh, for sure. This car is absolutely phenomenal. And Doug Young, I'm blaming you for this. <laughs> I'm blaming you for this, Doug Young. Um, but yeah, they have like a red, an orange, a yellow, I think, a white. I don't know, but I kind of want to get all color variations of this. This is also one of my favorite cars on the planet. But Mini GT, Lamborghini Huracan GT3 Evo. Look at the detail on that, man. It's friggin' sick. And Mini GTs roll, baby. They certainly roll. So, yeah. Probably going to be getting every color variation of that now. So, thanks, Doug Young, for getting me addicted to Mini GT. Because here's another one. And uh, this, if I remember right, this is a brand new release. And I actually purchased two of these. I have not got my second one yet. Because this was... One of my wife's early Christmas presents, I already gave it to her uh, because I've told her time and time again, I'm like, one day I'm going to buy you this car. I want you to have this car. But uh, 
you got to crack those mini GTs, man. You got to, you got to, you got to. <laughs> Maybe the Porsches. Maybe the Porsches. Um, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to crack those Huracans. I got to get, I got to get a display situation set up for those. But, um, but yeah, this is a brand new release. I had to have this one. So this one is my wife's. Mine is still on the way, and I might order a third one. Um, because Diecast Z, they offer. They offer a starting bid on this particular one. I don't know about other ones, but they offer a starting, uh, a little package bid for the regular and the chase for 50 bucks, which I think is pretty good. Uh, granted, that I think the mini GT chases go for that alone, I think. So um, something I'm considering doing, but for now, I just got two of these. But tell me that that is not friggin' fire, dude. No, it's not a GT3 RS. But still, that thing is friggin' beautiful. Rico says I just cracked my knuckles. <laughs> Thanks for the update, bro. But yeah, look at that. 992 Turbo S. Friggin' sick. So yeah, this is the wife's. Mine is still coming. And uh, yeah, we'll see about getting the chase, too. So we'll see. We'll see. Last but not least... Now, right after I put in an put in a bid for this and won it, they immediately put up an R32. I don't remember if they have an R33, but they have, definitely have an R32 and an R34, and I'm definitely going to get those as well because, man, one of my favorite liveries of all time. Um, what's up, Gary? Shortest diecast in the house. What's up, Gary? Good to see you, brother. Um, yeah, so I won the auction on this, and immediately after they put up they put up an R32 and they put up an R34 and I'm like, damn, like maybe next time. But yeah, we're talking about the N064 S13 Sylvia in shell livery. Look at that. Look at that friggin' crazy, wacky detail, dude. That thing is friggin' phenomenal. Let me spin it around so you can get a look at the diffuser. Look at the diffuser on that. That shit is wacky, man. God, that looks so good. Yeah, Eddie, I love shell livery, man. I love shell livery. I love shell livery. That's the only gas that I put in my car. Shell, shell premium, but yeah, friggin' sick. So, I think this is my second or third N064. The other two are Porsches. Um, but yeah, that's the box that comes in. It's friggin' nice, man. Friggin' nice, friggin' nice. The R32 looks almost identical to this, um, but the R34, instead of white, it's got a lot of gray on it. it still looks really, really good though. Really, really good. Uh, 803 Flawless, what's up? Uh, I got that entire set. So clean. R34 and NSX are stupid nice. Yes. Yeah, they got a newer NSX as well. I'm not planning on getting that one. I'm, I am I am planning on getting the uh, R32 and R34 for sure. Um, oh, man. I've been eyeing several N064 R34s to add to my collection. That looks so good. Yeah. I'm telling you guys. You guys won't regret you guys won't regret going premium. The only thing you might regret is spending money on it. But <laughs> I got a question for anybody that has NO64, do they roll? Because if they don't roll, I'm going to grab a screwdriver and take this off the base because I want to see if it rolls. What's up, little bro? Good to see you. Long time no see. You staying out of trouble, young man? I want to buy an S13 coupe in real life. They look so good. Yes, they do. Yeah, the prices have skyrocketed on those things. <laughs> Little cuz in the house. <laughs> uh, 803, uh, never unscrewed mine. Static, they don't roll. Dang. Dang it. Uh, Anthony, it depends. The newer ones tend to roll. Well, let's 
Let's see what this one does. Let's see. Uh, Andrew White, when is the next hunt video? I should be finishing that up tonight and premiering it tomorrow. Cars that don't roll just ruins the play pattern. <laughs> right. Yeah, there is a discussion on um there's a discussion on whatnot about it, and some people were like, eh, I don't care. You know, it's just the display piece, but I you know, just my view on it. I I look at them like my customs. They have to roll. If they don't roll, I will redo them because I don't know. It's just a part of the realism, you know. Uh, let me see if I can. There we go. I'll leave that little base on. Yeah, this one doesn't roll. Yeah, those wheels are locked. Huh? <laughs> hey, eat your banana. Oh. Are you making deep eye contact with me while you're eating that egg roll? <laughs> yeah, so at least this N064 does not roll, which is kind of a bummer. But it's all good. I'm not <clears throat> I'm not gonna send it back or anything. I'm not gonna do anything crazy like that. But man, such a nice model, man. Such a nice model. N064, very good. Uh even if they don't roll, it's uh I can't smash it on the table or microwave or it rolls down the slide. Why are you so violent, uh, Brian? <laughs> why, are you, why are you being so violent? Yeah, no regrets. I'll still order the R32 and the R34 for sure. Absolutely. Absolutals. So, yeah, very, very nice. N064, good stuff. I got to say, probably my two favorite premium. Uh, premium diecast makers is Fuel Me and uh, Fuel Me and Mini GT. You know, the detail is there. They roll. You know, again, that's it's not a big deal to some people, but it is for me. You know, that just it adds to the it adds to the realism, in my opinion. You know what I mean? So yeah, friggin' sick. Thank you, Diecast Z. Thank you, Caesar. Um, yeah, I will be placing orders for more stuff, absolutely, from you guys. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. I got to find room for that. Um, real quick before I go, <laughs> Rico, just chiming in with the randomness as always. Love you, man. Uh, bang your head. Metal health will. Metal health will drive you mad. <laughs> Static, honestly, uh, I don't care. Only did that with two cars. Uh, one was Halloween, one was green light. Lesson learned. Green lights don't last long if you throw them down a slide. Yeah. Yeah, probably not. Probably not. Uh, Jorge says, cool combi yellow moon eyes is sick. Nice. Yes, it is. That's B case, right? B case. I think that's B case. I think. All right. Go over fines real quick. My special guest is getting set up in behind the scenes. So we'll go over fines. Just notable fines. Just notable fines. That's it. Um, but yeah, uh, I was meaning to show you some of the AK stuff, but I left it all way over there. I'm not going to go grab it. Um, but yeah, as far as the AK stuff, picked up picked up a couple black Porsches, a couple S15 Liberty Walks. Uh, what else did I pick up? A couple of the Raging Express, one for me, one for the wife. She really likes that casting, even though she didn't care if it was a treasure hunt or not. She likes it. And... Um, yeah, I think that's all I picked up, I think, out of those AK shippers. Uh, this one I did not get on cam. This one I did not get on cam, and it keeps setting the record, man. It keeps setting the record. Um, 
This was at 13. This is now number 14. 14. Did not get this one on cam, guys. Another Kafer. Yes, G and H is still circulating. Still circulating. Uh, yeah, I ran into a fresh case of it at a Kroger. And uh, boom, there we go. There we go. That broke. That was the first super I found since the Camaro, which I think I found the Camaro two and a half weeks ago, I think. I think. Yeah, 14. <laughs> It's because I, I hit those Kroger shippers back then, like, really, really hard. Um, I already told you guys on this episode that there is going to be a Matchbox Chase, uh, Super Chase find in it, but now there's going to be two, because I found one today. So there we go. Card's pretty foobard on this one. It's got wings. It drinks some Red Bull. It's got wings. So it's a little foobard. We'll see. I don't know. Maybe I'll maybe I'll wheel swap that one too. I don't know yet. Um, did run into a mixed premium shipper at Kroger. Had a lot of uh, a lot of the Marvel. I think I think it might have had some Jurassic Park. It might have had some. Uh... <laughs> Eddie. <laughs> Is this a sign up for the free cave racer, free shipping, or do we sign up after? Right. <laughs> yeah. Where's my cave, bro? Cave? Scott. Cave. Cave. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Two more to tie my 1667 Camaros from 2013 Summit Colors. Yeah. 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 Friggin'. Slayed that super, which is fine with me because it's one of my. That's that's definitely going to be in the top five for this year for super rankings. I think it's super underrated. No, no pun intended. No pun intended. <clears throat> Come on, where's my free cave grab, bro? Anyways, they had a premium sidekick shipper that had a uh, had some exotic envy. Had some retro, had a bunch of stuff in it. There was no cyberpunk Porsches in it, but there were there were some Evos, so I took two Evos out of there. Again, I absolutely love Evos, so that's a custom I need to get done for sure. 110%. All right, as mentioned, I'm still waiting. <laughs> Will there be a video about a guy complaining about a guy? I'm not sure. That might actually be done and put to bed, Pete. It might actually be done and put to bed, but we'll see. We will see. We will see. Guys, I think we're all getting free kafers. <laughs> I'm the Oprah of kafers. You get a kafer. You get a kafer. You get a kafer. Um, anyways, last of the finds. As mentioned, I came across quite a bit, quite a bit of J case. Um, all of our Kroger's here have been dumping mad J case drops, like four dump bins plus. And um, yeah, I was lucky to get to this one during stocking, be able to go through it all fresh. And uh, so I did find this. This is going to a buddy. I don't need any more of these. I got my loose. I got my carded. I'm good. That's going to a muchacho. So that's number three found on the year. And you remember hearing about a lot of people finding the H case Jag in J cases? You remember hearing that? I found one of those. I found one of the Drift Mustangs in, in four dumps. Four dumps. So 16 cases. 16 cases, I found one Mustang. But in those J cases, I found two Jaguar F-types as well. So HK Super in J case. That's why I tell you guys, always check for previous case Super. It happens, and a lot of people were, were, a lot of people were reporting finding this in J case. So 
if you crack a case, if you get to a shipper, if you get to a dump bin and there's a particular case in it, always look for your previous case super. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It happens. So, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah. Uh, it's been a good week. It's been a good week. And uh, it's been really hit or miss for like the past month, month and a half. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Finally starting to get through that drought, finally. Uh, by the way, the JAG, that makes number seven and eight. Number seven and eight. So that's currently the third most found super I've ever found. It's it's the Kafer. It's last year's Nova Wagon Gasser at nine. I think it's nine. Was it nine? I think it was nine. I think that one I found nine of. And that's also the one where I left two in a store. Um, and then the Jag. So, yeah. Jaguar. Jaguar F-Type. Wait, hold up. We get to choose which free super we get. <laughs> I think he's in here. I'm not sure. I saw him earlier. Where's my cave at, bro? What's up, Bruce? Good to see you, buddy. Nice a uh, nice a Porsche, a Kafer, and Drift today. Going to be awesome Christmas for me. <laughs> you don't want no super. Supers are overrated. Ha! Huh, I'm the one with the record. I found zero. You found zero supers this year, Pete? Jeez, man. I remember you found that Roger Dodger super last year, and I was like drooling. I was like, God, because I cannot find that thing, man. It was hard. What was up with C-Case Corvettes being in F-Cases? I never heard of that. I never heard of that. Uh, TRD, nice. Uh, white found two Camaro Supercharger hunts, two Volvo Block chases. This week's been fire. Nice, man. Nice. Congratulations. I can see a lot of people missing that Jag. Doesn't jump out like some others. Yeah. Yeah, if you know what to look for, though, they'll, they're will they smiling at you. If you're looking down the case looking at them, they're smiling at you. <laughs> Peak Time Racing Unbox, the Q case, got two Camaro Supers. Wow, lucky duck. That happens, too. It's never happened to me, but, yeah. All right, so we're good. We are good. I'm going to bring on my special guest now. All of you should know this guy. If you don't know this guy, please go check out his channel. The link to his channel is down in the description below. I'm talking about Jake from Strictly Diecast. He's been focusing a lot of time lately on customs. He does some excellent work. He does a lot of collection showcases, mail calls, and uh, he's a great friend of this channel. So make sure you check him out if you have not already. And please welcome Jake from Strictly Diecast. What's up, bro? Going on, man. Not much. How you doing? Good, man. How are you? Pretty good. I'm a little tired, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, I hear you there. Actually, I uh, I went to a concert last night, so I'm definitely pretty tired myself. Oh yeah, who'd you go see? Um, it's like uh, I don't even know really what to like classify them. They're like hard rock, kind of like metal, uh, bad omens. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. I have not, but I do like some metal. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it was definitely a really good show. Yeah. A little burnt out. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. It catches up to you. That's for sure. Did you come home? In, did you come home in one piece at least? Oh yeah, yep. Yeah, I took my buddy. He hasn't been to a lot of concerts and stuff, so I took him to go and check him out. So, actually, I got a, uh, a once in a lifetime thing here. I actually ended up getting a drumstick. Oh, nice! Which is pretty sweet. I actually like the 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 drummer at the end. He threw it, and I jumped up, and it flung off my fingertips and this dude in front of me like snatched it but i guess whenever he snatched it he dropped it on the floor and i just i shot down with like as fast as i could and just snagged it off the floor and i just ran with it so it's like a once in a lifetime thing so i got the drummer's drumstick which is really cool nice man oh yeah yep got the necks on it and everything so it's the real deal <laughs> sick <laughs> you know it's authentic <laughs> too bad you can't catch up with him and get an autograph that would have been kind of cool that's that's what I told my wife because she's like, "Well, you should have got an autograph." I'm like, "Yeah, but like, I just didn't want somebody to like run up and try to get it because like people saw me get it and stuff." So 
but they're like, oh, that guy's wearing a Supreme beanie at a metal concert. We we got this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't wear the beanie. No, I actually I took my hoodie and everything off because it it was like I don't even know. It was like forty degrees standing outside with no t shirt or anything on. But like you know, by the time you're done with it, you're sweaty and stuff like that. So yeah, definitely no beanie in there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, my wife actually got me this. I don't even know. I think like one of like the first years we were dating for Christmas. She knows nice. I'm like big into Supreme and stuff, so. Nice. We won't ask her how much it costs, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get really. I didn't get a lot of other stuff for Christmas last year. Let's, let's just put it that way. Yeah, yeah, because Supreme is pretty expensive, if I remember right. It it is like right off the bat, but it's the resale, just like Hot Wheels and stuff, that really is what gets you. So. Yeah. But sure. like beanies and stuff, they're not as um, they're not as like sought after as like the like the box logo hoodies and stuff. So like you can get these relatively like for face value, which is nice. So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I see your uh, your cars displayed back there is coming along pretty good. That's oh, it's good. Yeah, they're all uh, they're all filled up, all five of them. My uh, my wife said no more after this. <laughs> so I have to wait till we get a bigger house. <laughs> I get a lot of compliments on how I have them like laid out and stuff because like I'm I measured them, made sure they're all level, equally spaced apart, everything. So like I I just have real bad like OCD and stuff. So <laughs> that's good though. That's good. Yeah. Though. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Good. It came out pretty good though. You need to get yourself some of these cases. Yeah. Where'd you Where'd you find those ones at? Uh, these are Carney, the same ones like Lamley uses. That's actually who um, I found the cases and then. I realized that he said that they were from Youngstown, Ohio, which is only like 45 minutes away from me. So I can actually just go and pick them up and save on shipping and stuff. So nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll have to check those out. Yeah, we're going to be moving pretty soon. So, yeah, I'm going to be. Oh, there you go. I'm going to be rethinking and planning all the moving places. Like, are you moving close, like the same city or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be in the same city, just moving into a different house and. Yeah, something with a room that I can dedicate to this. and Yeah, I hear it. Yeah, I just got my own little corner of the basement, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know how it is. Yeah, it's got to make it work, though. For sure. So what's your backstory with Diecast? How long you been collecting? What got you into it? Tell um, us your so story. I have been collecting, and this hasn't been, like, straight through. Like, I think a lot of people kind of think that I've been, like, diehard straight from, like, 2015, which is not the case. I mean, it's always an on and off thing with me. I mean, I'm, I definitely don't go as hard as you do. I mean, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, I got into it in 2015, um, and it's it was pretty much just, like, I mean, I always kind of knew that um, Hot Wheels made, like, realistic cars and stuff it wasn't just all fantasy but i just really like wasn't into collecting them or anything but i happened to be at walmart one night and i was like you know what like i'll just take a look at them and i found it was the black red and gold um 90 civic ef hatchback and i've actually mm -hmm. had two ef hatchbacks so i'm like no way like i used to have this car like you know i've, I've owned them in real life like there's a casting of it i'm like so me and my girlfriend at the time not not my wife now but uh, <laughs> a way long time ago girlfriend um we were digging through a dump bin and I, I mean, it's not even like I was trying to scalp, but I'm like, I found like 10 or 12 of these things. And I bought them all. Cause I just thought that they were so cool. So and I ended up giving them like a lot of them away and stuff like that. And, um, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much kind of what like got the ball rolling. Cause then I was like, wow, they make a civic. I wonder what else they make. And then I, you know, I, it just started snowballing from there. But again, though, I really didn't know, about super treasure hunts or treasure hunts or anything like that. So, I mean, who knows how many of those I could have like passed along my travels and stuff until I kind of started like researching them more and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, that was, uh, that was pretty much just a, a wrap from 2015. I've been doing it ever since, but, um, I did see that in your title here, you were talking about downsizing your collection. Now, is that just all main lines or is that everything in general? Uh, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna pan out to everything, but I'm gonna start with premiums. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Um, I didn't mention this to everybody, but obviously I've been talking about being on whatnot for like the past week and, you know, it's, it's completely addictive. Have you checked it out yet, Jake? Uh, check what out? Whatnot? I have. Um, I checked it out whenever, like, cause Lamley's been like throwing it out there and stuff like that. Um, I got yeah. on it for like a little bit. I mean, it, it definitely seems like a very cool app and stuff like that, but I have not actually like participated or anything like that in it. But how do you like it so far? 
I'm addicted, dude. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I'm not just talking about it in a. I, I haven't made a sale on there yet, and yeah, uh, I don't go on there and drop major coin on stuff. I did make my first purchases, as you saw, but um, just even just tapping into the auctions and just listening to what some of these things are. Just some some of the most obscure stuff, some of the most coolest stuff something for everybody and a lot of these guys on here they start them off really really low like there's even a lot of guys on there that'll put they'll put supers they'll put rlcs they'll put convention cards up for a dollar wow yeah, yeah i mean that's that's hard to beat <laughs> yeah, they'll put it up, I mean, of course, i'm sure they don't sell for that but yeah i mean that's yeah it, they, they don't sell for that but the fact that they're not saying okay it's gonna take 350 bucks to get this off my hands you know it, there's not a lot of people like that and even the even the guys on there that want to put it at a set price, almost everybody on there is really fair. They're under the the eBay market value. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. it makes it entertaining. It makes it engaging, and it, it's cool, man. It's cool. Now, are you gonna? Um, do you plan on using that to get rid, like start like downsizing your collection? Or yeah, yeah, that's what I was getting into. My first, uh, my first whatnot auction. I haven't scheduled it yet. I got to set everything up and everything, but it's gonna be for the premiums. Nice. And, I'll, and I'm gonna start them off at probably, I don't know, maybe retail, maybe a dollar. I don't know. I don't know yet. But I just want them gone, and I just want people to enjoy them. I'm not going on there in a business aspect or anything, but. So do you think the guys that are putting like the convention cars and stuff for a dollar, do you think those are like the true collectors that actually aren't into it to make like a buck? Because I mean, could it potentially sell for a dollar? It could. Yeah. So, it I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I'm like I said, I, that's never going to happen, but um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of cool. That, I mean, there are dudes who aren't into it, to, you know, to make a quick buck on it. So. Yeah. <laughs> Paul says, Keep throwing them crumbs at me with whatnot, Derek. <laughs> hey, man, I'm just saying it's pretty good. And just like with everything, just like with normal collecting and people, you know, you can tell who the good ones and the bad ones are. Yeah. You can definitely tell who has the stores and who are just regular guys, you know, or whatever. Um, but, yeah, like I said, a lot of these guys just putting up really good, like, old stuff. And, you know – you can definitely tell that there's a lot of guys that go out and buy collections and then auction them off, which it's, I don't think, I don't, I don't see a problem with that. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of like what they do with like, um, like buying like complete like storage units and stuff, you know? Yeah. yeah like they'll go through and they'll pick out everything that they want to keep and then they'll auction off the rest, you know? And I don't, yeah, see, a problem. Yeah. I don't see a problem with that. If you got, if you got the ability to do that, then. More power yeah. By all means. Yeah. Yeah. So, but overall I think it's really good. And, um, yeah, we'll try it and we'll, we'll see what happens. Like I said, I'm not trying to become a millionaire. More so, I'm just trying to get this stuff out of here. <laughs> yeah, know? I mean, you, I, I can only imagine what your collection looks like behind behind the scenes. Oh, it's terrible, dude. It's, <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible, I, but I'm just not, I've gotten to that point where I'm just like, I'm done. Like, I'm not picking up anything. Yeah, you know that new that new T Bird, that drag T Bird? Yeah. Man. I picked one of those up because I thought it was cool. And I was, as soon as I got home, I was like, I'm not really in love with this thing. Why did I get it? Like, I'm not, like, now I'm to that point. Have you caught yourself getting to that point? Well, that's why I asked you about like downsizing stuff because I've actually, that's, I don't know, part of it's due to just, um, and this seems to be like a general like opinion, but like next year's like cases and stuff just really don't seem very appealing to me as far as mainlines and stuff. And that's actually where I'm going to start downsizing my collection is like my mainlines and stuff. Cause I mean, I have so many different recolors and variations of like cars that I just really wish I just what not really like wish that I wouldn't have picked up, but it's just like, I've really slowed down on picking up recolors and different variations and stuff like that just due to space. So, um, that's why I picked up the one jammer is to just start going through like my main lines that I have shown off and going through and pulling some of those out because, um, I mean, definitely thanks to you. I mean, I definitely want to get into like the mini GT. I sh uh, saw you showing off your NS64, which I brought, I brought mine out again too. Cause hey, there we go. So freaking <laughs> sweet. But, um, um, Kaido house, stuff like that. Like I want to just kind of start up and up in the game more, you know, and getting into better quality stuff that's worth the money other than just picking up every dollar car I see. So, yeah. 
Yeah. That and like the super treasure hunts definitely aren't as appealing to me this year or next year is that first one. That first one. Yeah, like this this episode, this hunt episode where I'm going through these AK Safeway shippers, I'm like I'm finding all the mainline Batmans and I'm like, Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> it's no big deal. I don't I I don't care if I if I find that super. I really that's don't. exactly what me and my uh, my buddy were talking about too. Yeah, like we could care less. I mean, that would probably be a super I would leave behind unless somebody would really want to trade for one or something. But still, yeah. I mean, it's I don't know. It just yeah. seems like next year is a big like I've heard a lot of different people like especially like on the Facebook page and stuff saying that how they they want to take a break from it and stuff like that. And next year seems like a good uh, a good time to do that. So it might be. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah, I mean. Uh, you know that that Mercedes is nice, but that's another one that I'm just kind of like. Me personally, I've never really cared for that Mercedes. Like, yeah. Um, now, yeah. if it was now if it was an AMG GT or a C63 or something, then yeah, I'd be like, that's nice. But I just yeah. never been a fan. Of that. I do think the um the Mazda Cosmos uh, Cosmo or whatever is pretty cool though. That one's pretty good. Yeah, and then the Camaro, of course, the Camaro is really really nice. I really like yeah. that one. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I'm just I'm like, hmm, I don't know, you know. Maybe- this is also this is also coming from a guy who like never finds them. So, <laughs> <But>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly, it just yeah, it burns you out just hunting them. That's why I've said time and time again, I'm just like, I think I'm done, guys. Like, I'm just to the point where like, if I find them, I find them. If I don't, I'm okay with it. You know, that's that's right. That's what I was also talking about too. Is just I mean showing up to store after store after store and just waste like constantly turning your car off and turning it back on just to walk away empty handed or you only find like the same old stuff that you've been seeing or you miss a drop and it's just like it, it like you said like it just it burns you out and i mean i definitely like i definitely I, I don't know if i like hunt hard but like it's it's every week like i usually like mondays and tuesdays i'm stopping at different targets walmart's dollar generals and just driving all around you know god's creation looking for these things and like it <laughs> nine times out of ten you come up empty-handed unless you get something for somebody else or stuff stuff like that so it, like you said it, it just gets like exhausting especially like like i said i've been doing it since 2015 so i mean it's just just definitely need a break <laughs> yeah for sure this might be the year to do it <laughs> it might yeah be. no i agree i agree without yeah. a doubt yeah, Jeremy Lance says, uh, I really like that Arcamero too. It's cool. That go for me. Yeah. Yeah, believe it or not, my main motivation for going out and hunting that Camaro is to help Pete out. <laughs> That's like my main motivation. Um, but yeah, I was obviously found that Q case Camaro, which is really nice. I'm that one is really nice. That's one I definitely wish I could find. I love that green. That's not, that's my favorite body style Camaro too, is like the early 80 ones. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. I'm trying to help Pete out with that one too, because he's like, "Man, that's one I gotta have." And yeah, I need to find two more. I need to find one more to open, and then one for him. So, yeah, the only super I have from this year is my buddy Jimmy hooked me up with it. It's the Lamborghini. Oh, the mirror, yeah, yeah. That yeah, bright orange nice. is fantastic on that thing. It is. It is. It is. It's really good. How do you feel about the staggered wheel setup on it? I don't like it. I think it would have yeah, been better like without it. it. It's one of those ones where it's like, why'd you do that? You know. Yep. Kind of like that, the, the Bugatti. The Bugatti doesn't need it either. No. The no. Chiron. Yeah. Uh, Rico says, give me a 60s Camaro. <laughs> yeah, 60s are, I mean, probably without the doubt, like the most popular of them. But I've always been fond of like the round headlights, 80 styles one. Yeah, for sure. So needless to say, you're pretty, you're, you're, you lean more towards the JDM stuff, right? Primarily, yeah, because I mean, that's just like my real life background. I mean, I grew up on like Hondas and stuff like that. So, I mean, and, like my favorite car, you know, dream car is the R34. So, yeah, primarily JDM stuff. But like whenever somebody's like, oh, well, what are you into? Like, what do you want in this box? I'm throwing in extras. I'm like, just send whatever, dude. I mean, it's I mean, my my uh, my collection isn't just primarily one thing. You know, it's muscle cars, JDM, Euro, exotic, you know, into it all. So, but yeah, I mean. Definitely mostly JDM, but <laughs> Adam N asked, he said, Hey Strictly, is it plastic referring to your mirror super? <laughs> <laughs> it's a plastic, yeah. Remember, yeah. It, supposedly it was a plastic super, supposedly. You know. <laughs> uh, it's it's metal. I mean, I didn't take it out yet, but I mean definitely looks metal. Yeah. Tony says, Don't get rid of your Nissans. 
No, <laughs> no. I love Nissans, that's for sure. Just, yeah. but, I mean, I posted this one. I know, I saw that. The thing's gorgeous. Yeah. Can't take credit for the color, but, I mean, the, the dude who did it, I mean, it was kind of almost like he knew. Like, he didn't even know, like, my channel or anything because it was off of Facebook. But uh, he, this is just a random one he sent. And it just so happened to be, like, my channel color. So, I'm like, I got to add my own little flair to it. So oh, Absolutely, man. All I did that. pretty much was add a little bit of detail and uh, put some 1K on it. So Nice. Nice. That came out excellent. Yeah, yeah, it definitely looks sweet. So you just put the you you just bought pretty much the body the way that it is, and then you just kind of did a couple things to it to make it. Make no, it this was just like a um. And one of the I got uh, what else did he send me? He sent me oh um he sent me my that purple Ford um F one hundred Super Treasure Hunt mm. from like two years ago. He sent me that. I I got it like a really good deal on Facebook, and uh. He was just, he also customized his die cast and stuff like that. So he's like, I'm, I'm going to hook you up with a couple extra stuff. And this is just one he already had um, customized and stuff like that. So he just randomly threw it in the box. I had no idea that it was even in there until I opened it. So, yeah. But yeah, he, um, that is nice. Too. It, I'm it, assuming he, I don't know. I want to say he probably spray painted it, but, um, cause it doesn't really look like airbrush. But yeah, he, he just painted it and, um, it was on stock wheels and everything. And I just added the, the, the 10 spokes on it and did some like front detailing, like the little vents and stuff on it on the sides and uh, some taillights and the exhaust tip. Yeah. Well, that, that I added was, my channel logo, of course, too, but yep. That looks great. Yeah. And it, it, it does match your channel logo perfectly. Yeah. I was like, I got to slap my logos on the side of it because <laughs> it just looks too cool. Definitely like that 80s synth wave vibe. Yeah. Well, I, I like it. I like it. And. Uh, Oh, thanks to bullet tony customs which a lot of people think that like he just sent me like his customs which technically it is his customs but he sent me like a bunch of them because the weather's getting real bad here and i can't really paint outside so he sent me ones that he wasn't like he kind of like lost interest in or wasn't really sure what to do with them so he just had them all painted and they just pretty much need wheels and some detailing but i finally have a porsche to customize hell yeah you got a good one too 934 rsr Yep, this is the this is a uh, majorette, so it's a little bit bigger scale, oh. but I think I found a good set of wheels for it. So, and nice. it's a really nice color. Yeah, maybe the um, maybe if you want to go like slammed and staggered on that thing, or you know, slammed and stretched, I think maybe the the Hot Wheels ten millimeters might actually look good on that. I kind of been wanting to try that a little bit. I actually found because these things have been peg warmers. Um, it's the one Batmo or Batman. Um, I think it's like that Ford Transit. It's like the tan one that has the black six spokes on it. Yeah, they look like I believe they're slightly bigger. So that's I bought one of those to try. Actually, I still have to find the right um, Allen size. It's like a one point two seven or something. So I have to get one to get the screws out of it. But I think oh. the wheels will fill in really nice to that because they seem like slightly bigger yeah. i don't know if they might be 12 mil i don't know yeah we'll have fun with that let me know how it goes because yeah I, I got a couple of loose 934 hour sorry majorettes i was thinking about playing with yeah but i still want to like do one from scratch though because i mean like i was telling you before i mean you definitely i mean with all the porsches and stuff you do with that and then what uh sammy's doing too i mean they just look so good slammed on the ground yeah, <laughs> they do <laughs> It's almost like they belong that way. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of uh, what kind of customs are you working on? Um, well, any, I guess <laughs> I've got a couple. I got one that I have to get done by our Christmas build, which is coming up really quick. I actually just sent mine off to my uh, my. I actually used the diecast misfits, like like my Christmas build. I actually used it for my Secret Santa too that I'm doing with Paco. So. Oh, nice, nice. Yep. Nice. Yeah, that's the first and foremost. But other than that, it's just been kind of playing around. I mean, that Porsche Super Chase, that one. Yeah, yeah that one was sweet. Yeah, this one I'm playing around with. I'm playing around on slamming and stretching one of these. Ooh, there you go. That'll be different. Yeah. Yeah. Comes out pretty good, too. So. Yeah. Yeah, just that. I just played around with that. I haven't had a chance to sit here in a week. So, yeah, like I said, I got to get I got to get mine done and get that sent off. That's first priority, obviously. Freaking camera. Steve's asking you a question. He says, Jake, are you working on some customs? 
I am, and I brought them over just because I knew I was going to get asked that question. So, Let's go. but they're not. Um, I mean, granted, they're not done, but one of them is for one of my best friends. That I mean, there's I have like six best, well, including my wife. There's six of us, and we do a Secret Santa every year. So I got his name, and um, he has a um, newer Tacoma. So I am actually working on a Tacoma for him. Still have to get. Uh, rear riders i have a uh, set coming in the mail but um and i got some white overlays laid on it. i just have to uh i just put them on today so i'm gonna let them dry and then do uh do the other water slides and stuff too but i actually found because he has like that tan like the sand i think it is color so actually i found a color that's actually super close to his truck so nice working on one of those and then the other one i'm working on which Again, I saw the one that you did, and this one's for um, next year for the Super Bowl of Diecast for the Pink Slips, but a uh, Turbo Ooh. Civic drag car. Hello. Getting some water slides. I got, I got some uh, some K-tuned water slides coming for it. I uh, just got the front end detailed with the turbo and the intercooler, and then I'm also fitting a roll cage in the back of it. Probably can't really see it, but where did you I find think... K where did you find K-tuned water slides? um hhw customs i believe on instagram nice which i know i don't think you have an instagram so yeah i, oh, I think yeah. he's primarily on there but a lot of people um go through him and stuff like that but um yeah i just wanted something like drag oriented you know for like the civic so i figured k2 and then i uh i'm also going to do like the exhaust and the wastegate and stuff out the top of course but i already got the uh the drag slicks on it that looks good got some skinnies in the back yeah that car looks really good, all black. I like oh, it. Oh, I know, dude. It looks. <laughs> I know. It looks. It looks sick. really good, all black. <laughs> right. You hey, now. Your next one. Go for it. I know. You got me thinking. I'm like, hmm. Dude, I know. <laughs> it like it just looks so menacing, like all black, like that. So. For sure. That's a yeah. Those are uh, those are the only two because, like I said, I'm really kind of like battling Mother Nature right now with when she wants to cooperate weather wise. So I think we have like another. 50 some degree day coming up like Wednesday. So I have to uh, do some more because I actually um, I actually plan on color matching the bumpers to gloss black. Nice. So I might nice. try to get that done Wednesday. So yeah, those are um, those are really like the only two because like I said, I already got my um, my Christmas build done, stuff like that. And then I actually I did another custom for my Secret Santa as well because I knew I was sending the Christmas one to that particular person. So I did them another one as well. But I'll show that in like a later video and stuff. I want them to get the package first, obviously. So, yeah, yeah, those are the two I'm working on now. Nice. Uh, let's see. Going through a lot of people asking you questions, Jake. Uh, Jeremy, uh, in a nutshell, is asking you was Fast and Furious the Fast and Furious movies were those a source of inspiration for? Oh, absolutely. Love yep. Cars? Absolutely. This one right here. That's what did it for me. Nice. Dude, I, I remember like I had to beg my mom to go take me because I, I was only like 11 or 12 when the first one came out in 2001. So I had to beg my mom to take me and she did. And um, I remember when this thing rolled up on camera, I mean, I was just absolutely like, that was it. Like this <laughs> car rolling up at the stadium. When I saw it, like the, the sound, the color, everything, like that was it. That, that just, it, it got out of hand from there. So yes, Fast and the Furious, for sure was like the biggest inspiration for me um Game getting into like jdm and stuff like that and of course like my first car it was a 1991 honda civic hatchback fart can swap motor you know the whole nine yards and i thought that was the fastest thing in the world at 17. <laughs> <laughs> so um what yeah, swap I mean, did, what swap did you have you have a b16 in it uh b18 ls nice. yep nice. yeah because nice. you said you used to be into like hondas and stuff too right Honda, Honda's in my blood, man. Yeah, oh, absolutely. 100%. Actually, it's, it's kind of, well, I don't even know if you could still see it. I'm actually like kind of in the process of getting it removed, but I actually had the, the H symbol tattooed. Yeah, you probably really can't see it. I could see the remnants of it. Yeah, it was it was bright green and Honda. Oh, yeah, dude, I was hardcore. First, oh, yeah. first tattoo, though, so, I mean. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I've owned a lot of Hondas, man. I've. My first car was an 84 Honda Prelude. Then That's I, had 90, sweet. I had a 91 Accord. Nice. Uh, four door, five speed. And then, yeah, then I got the, oh, uh, God, I think, can't think of the chassis code, but 
people will call it an EG coupe, but we know it's EJ. I think it's EJ. It's EJ, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I had an EX of that, so a single cam VTEC, and then nice. three, three EGs. Um, yeah, one of them, my first one had a B16 with a GSR trans. Nice. Second one was a full B18C5. That was a fun one. Oh, yeah. Yep. The, the funnest one was uh, my last one. Which was a K20 head, K24 block, and DC uh, Frankenstein, DC 5R trans. Oh my nice. god! You what could, was that in? Uh, 92 CX hatch. Oh, uh, I'm sure that ripped. <laughs> oh, it ripped, dude. It ripped, and I still had my I still had my last Evo at the time, which was the Evo Nine. Oh, there you go. Uh, basically, full bolt-on, speed density, ethanol, stock turbo. It had cams, uh, but it, it put down like 436 wheel and like 376. Uh, that's pretty good pounds torque dude i wanted to race those two like so bad because i swear yeah. to god my eg my eg probably could have took it oh um, yeah i mean you got the you got the weight advantage the cx i think is like one of the lightest ones of that yep. generation yeah yep. it's the lightest one the That's lightest awesome. one yeah. i had my last civic that i sold it was like my pride and joy like my baby like i bought it like 700 bucks flat black rolling shell new motor or anything i put like all my paychecks everything into it but um right when i sold it it was a um I went through like five different motors in it, but the last motor it had, it had a low compression um, B20 B, I think, from Japan that I went down to Virginia to go pick up, and um, I put a HX35 turbo on it. It was only on, it was like pretty conservative, only on like seven or eight pounds, but it made like 250, 260, but it was still pretty like fun, you know, just oh, yeah. to scoot around in and stuff like that. But I mean, that turbo wasn't even sweating for what I was putting it through, you know. Oh. For, but, sure. Um, <laughs> for yeah, sure. I'll do, uh, I'm definitely gonna send you some pictures of some of my other like cars and stuff I've had. But, yeah, um, I'll send. Yeah, I'll send you pics too. Yeah, probably like probably my most. I I had an AP2 S2000 as well. <laughs> dude, that's awesome. Didn't that's one have... Honda I've yet to ride in is an S2000. Oh, dude, they're so fun. They're so. I nice. heard that because they're so well balanced that they just handle like you wouldn't believe. Oh, they're amazing, dude. They're they are amazing. My buddy has one, and he just put a uh, a Jay's Racing titanium exhaust on it, and it's it, like it sounds like otherworldly. <laughs> so. Oh hell yeah, <laughs> hell yeah, yeah! I think my favorite Honda of all time was my black EM one, though. Oh, there you go. I'll send you pictures of that, but yeah, my buddy cool. had a red '99 EM one, and that thing was like completely mint. Like I was always a fan of the Electron Blue Pearl, obviously. Yeah. But, um, Actually, on my 97, I converted the whole front end to a 99 to 2000 just for like the skinnier, slimmer headlights and stuff. Yep. Yep. And the sexier front bumper. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, Tony is asking you, what's your favorite casting for the year, Jake? Ooh, favorite casting for the year. That's a good question. Um, I don't know. I guess. If that's just like a either mainline or premium, I would say for premium, it would definitely probably be the Liberty Walk R34. Yeah, without a doubt, that thing looks fantastic, and I still want to get my hands on the Chase at some point. Yeah, um, I don't know. As far as like mainlines and stuff goes, that's a tough one. There's there's a lot of good ones to choose from this year. I don't know. I guess as far as like new castings and stuff, I would probably say definitely either one or two of the wagons, either the Nissan Maxima wagon or um, the Volvo Drift wagon. Both of those look really, really good in my opinion. I definitely yeah. want to pick up one of the Nissan ones to do the like a custom on just because you can see through the hood and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Super JDM says how that looks like oh, real, like real life Tacoma. <laughs> yeah, it's actually, I think this color i found is called like almond but like i said it was like the closest to like the like the sand like tan color i could find but yeah these do look really good in white though nice yeah super jdm actually just hooked me up with a, a really sweet mail call he sent me a bunch of goodies all the best buy exclusives and stuff nice and the golden ducky finally <laughs> nice oh yeah yeah super jdm's good dude haven't seen him here in a while so thanks for tuning in super jdm appreciate you man uh, let's see. <laughs> Rico, I forget. Is this channel PG? Yes, for the most part. 
98% of it PG. <laughs> Static says B18 fire. Yes, sir. Yeah, if I was to get another, if I if I was to get another Honda, I would probably get one that I haven't gotten, which is it'd probably either be a DC2 Integer or an EK. Yeah, probably. DC2 was always one of my favorite ones too. Yeah. Would you do the um, the JDM type uh, type R front end on it? Yeah, I would do it, and I would probably I would probably probably do that same motor setup i had my cx so i'll do like k20 top end k24 bottom end dc i wrote my one buddy at the time he bought a hatch down in texas and brought it up here and it had a frankenstein k20 k24 and it, it made like i, th- I want to say it had itbs on it but i'm not 100 percent sure but it made about like three like 280 to like 300 i think to the wheels and that thing i mean it was all ripped, dude i mean they're definitely impressive and then my one other buddy had a RSX, I think it was an 05, and it had a full K24 swap on it, and that thing made about like 200, I think, to the wheels with like an intake exhaust and stuff like that and a tune, and that thing yeah. ripped pretty good too. But K20s are the new, the uh, the new B swap though. Exactly, because remember, like the B16 made the most horsepower per liter of any engine, yep. even any Ferrari at the time. Yeah. I mean, now how you... high they rev out to is just crazy. Yes. <laughs> it's... Yeah. That's the only downside about going K24 bottom end is you, you got to build them to rev. Yeah. They tell you you can't really rev them over eight grand, you know, which yeah. is still great. But I mean, if you want to do like nine grand, 9,200, then you got to, you got to build them. Oh yeah. I think Absolutely. it's, I, I think it's the rods. If I remember right, that are the weak point in them. Yeah. But yeah, I downloaded that EG. I put down 250 to the wheels, and it had nothing done to it. It was just that's good stock, man. I mean, that's that's, <laughs> that's a excellent swap stock for sure. That's, yeah, that's excellent. That's the stuff that a B series dreams of. Oh yeah, B series are <laughs> not stock. That's for it's sure. so hard to make power. It's so hard to make power on naturally aspirated B series. Because I think like the highest like B series is what probably like the Type R maybe. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, B18C. Like, like 180 or something, whatever it is, 170. Yeah, B18C5, like I think. Well, God, what were they rated for? I can't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. Because uh, what, B16 was 160, GSR was 170. Yep. I think like JDM GSR was like 175. Yeah, yeah. Because I think they had slightly higher compression, I think. Yeah, yeah I think and something R- about I think it was either like the GSR or Type R like manifolds or something f- like flowed better than. It's been so long, dude. I mean, since I've been like in the Honda game and stuff, but yeah, yeah, no, the GSRs had those had that funky intake manifold. Yeah, where it flew, went. Yep. It was backwards. <laughs> yeah, it went down. And then it, it was, and then it had the butterfly in it, which if it's all on stock ECU and stuff, that sounds like the VTEC, but it's not yeah, actually but the it's VTEC. Not, yep. Yeah. Yeah, and then everybody has put scum two manifolds on them to get rid of all that. Just like the oh, best I remember in my one LS, I swapped to the uh, instead of like the A one cams, I swapped to the B one cams because they were like slightly bigger lobes or some crazy thing like that. I mean, it was the stuff that, like we used to do back in the day to like try to like gain any amount of like one horsepower is just. <laughs> <laughs> I know we were like so we were like so horsepower thirsty in the B series. But I mean, you should never sleep on a well done Honda though, because it'll. For sure. For sure. Uh, Super JDM. You. Super JDM says Hot Wheels needs to make an RSX Type R. I agree with that 100%. Yes. Absolutely. Yep. I, we had a DC. We had a DC5 as well. We had a Type S. That nice. Was pretty, that nice. was a pretty fun car. That was nice. I've always liked the RSXs. I always thought that they were pretty sleek looking. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when they got all the Type R stuff, the spoiler yeah. and everything done. I like that. How do you feel about the EP3s? The egg. <laughs> the real egg, yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I like the Type R version of it. Yes, yeah. The Type R version looks pretty good. Would I actively go out and try to buy one? No. No, yeah. That and where the shifter is, like up on like the it's like, goofy. Dash, so weird. It's so goofy. Big. It's kind of yeah. cool, but it's goofy. It's My sick. buddy had one, and it's just so weird that he was like grabbing up here to shift, and it's just <laughs> he put the Type R wing on his though, which made it look a little bit better. But oh, for sure. 
Yeah, the whole type sure. R kit made those things look tremendously better. For sure. So I also had um, I had an FG2, which is uh, oh, what is it? 06 to oh, 08? 11? Or maybe 11, yeah. Yeah, 06 to 11 coupe SI. And then I had, and then I got rid of that and got an FA5 the sedan. That's another one of my right. favorite cars. My buddy had one of those in like that burnt orange, but I mean his those the, the clear coat issues with those things is crazy though. Yeah, yeah. The the paint quality really it took just, it. Yeah, dude, it was so bad and like faded and just. Ugh. Yeah, it's so weird that a lot. So many of those had paint issues, but yep. yeah, but those are great cars too. Um, yeah, especially the 09s because the 09 because. My FG, my my FG was an 06, so first year. Yeah, yep. And it actually it actually had a bad synchro. <laughs> yeah, the synchro. Apparently, the synchros go yep. on, go out in those. And uh, I don't think they have LSD either. And I think they got LSD in 09. Yeah. And my, and yep. my FG was an 09. And it was perfect trans. It felt way better. Yeah, I mean LSD. That definitely helps when you're trying to trying to put the power down for sure. Mugen FA5. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I, I was planning to do that full conversion to mine, but it just it never happened. I thought, dog, dog, you had an FA5 too. Oh, How shit. do you feel about the new uh, the new Type R's? I like them. I like them, but I mean, obviously they're fast. Um, like a lot of those car review channels, they they. They seem to say that they handle like they're all-wheel drive. They don't feel like they're front-wheel drive. They handle like yeah. they're all They feel like it. Um, but the thing that really killed like my Honda love is when they came out with the 10th Gen SI. Because, yeah, it had a K24, but it's completely different. The head yeah. was all set up all funky. Yeah. And, you know, they got rid of the headers and started putting down pipes on them, which is kind of weird and... Yeah, uh, that, I think like the overall look of them kind of like went downhill in a way too. I like the looks of them. I just I don't like the engine. And if you yeah. ever heard one with it with an exhaust, they sound terrible. Yeah, they don't sound good at all. And then the fact that they kind of got away from the whole naturally aspirated thing is kind of a turn off as well. Because that's yeah. that's what I love. Like if I like if I see a a seven hundred horsepower fully built GSR, I'm like you know turboed, and I'm I'm like oh that's cool, I like it. Yeah. But it, yep. If I see a 300 horsepower, you know, 350 horsepower all motor K24, <laughs> then I'm like, ooh, yes, please. Well, then it it takes a lot to make power naturally aspirated too. I mean, it's a whole different ball game when you're trying to make it without any sort of power adder, you know. So. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, Andre says the firing order that causes them to sound whack. It could be. I think I think a large part of it has to do with the way the head is designed. Yeah, because it all collects into one. Yeah. Yeah, like the it, it's like some kind of internal header design where it's like the runners are inside the head, and then literally it's like a downpipe for the opening. Yeah, it just connects right on. onto the. Yeah, it, they're definitely goofy for sure. Yeah, and they only rev out to like seven grand, which is like weak sauce for Honda. Yeah, that's I can't <laughs> have none of that. That's a no like bueno. Eight, nine, ten grand. Yeah, yeah, that's no bueno. But apparently. You can put K20 heads on those, huh? And make them cool. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah, yep. I forgot. I forgot the name of the shop. They're in the. I think they're in Tulsa. They're a Honda shop. Um, I can't remember the name of the shop at the time, but they're really big into Hondas, and they're really good. They were the first ones to do that. They're the first ones to put a K20 head on on a on a tenth gen. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and it's on the dyno, and you hear it, and it, it sounds just like a ninth gen. It sounds yeah. like, exactly I like it. it. <laughs> Paul says one to one skill talk. <laughs> yeah, one to one. Yeah, we're kind of going guys. off on a on a haunted tangent here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, guys. We're gonna get back to diecast. Just give us a few <laughs> <laughs> just bear with us. Um, yeah, super JD uh, internal four into one is gross. Yeah, yep, that's gross. No Weak way. Again, I really like the tent gens. I just don't like that head setup. So if I ever get a tent gen, I'm going to set aside some money and make sure to do a K20 head swap to it and build the bottom end, of course, so it can wrap. Oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I can only imagine how thin and stuff those rods are. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, J&J Hot Wheels, what's up? Saying good evening to everyone. Welcome, uh, J&J. Yeah. Going on, guys. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. 
So what are some pieces that you're like really longing for, like you've wanted for a long time that you are planning to add to your collection? Like any kind of grail or just hard to find piece? Like, like, like what are you looking for? Well, um, I guess short term, I actually recently acquired some M2 stuff. It's actually the, um, like how M2 does like the, like those little like Christmas shipper type deals. Mm. Like they do them for like the, like the, uh, the Coca-Cola ones. Yeah. Me and my buddy were searching high and low at the Walmarts and stuff. And I mean, they were just getting scooped up like crazy. I mean, it was way easier last year to find them than, um, than this year. But, um, we really wanted, um, these two and i actually found a dude on facebook who was only charging face value believe it or not and um he calculated the shipping which the shipping wasn't like that bad from kentucky but um Mm. i got two of each um one for me and one for my buddy jimmy but the first one here is this um like the 1500 it's got like the tree in the back and it's got the pile up front which i think is really cool that's cool so i definitely had to have one of these i love like this generation i mean along with like that 454 ss the rlc one yeah so i got that and then um this was another one i had to have this is the uh the 73 gmc jimmy sierra slammed down oh wow that looks yeah good. that looks really good they even got like a little roll cage in the back too i don't know you probably can't really see it but I can see it. that's nice yeah, yeah so the, the polar bear, or like the snowman, is kind of creepy, but. <laughs> <laughs> the Wait, snowman is a little low, if you get what I'm saying. Like, why is the bear reaching for him like that? And why is he, like, down here? <sighs> yeah, like, what's, <laughs> what's going on there? <laughs> but, what yeah, those two, I mean, stuff like this, at least around me, but I think probably around anywhere. I mean, stuff like this, it just gets scalped really bad. Absolutely. Everybody loves, like, square body stuff, obviously, so. But yeah, I mean, for the deal, I, I mean, I got four of those with shipping for under 50 bucks. So, I mean, can't really beat it, I guess, charging face value, like I said, so like seven or eight bucks. But um, other than that, um, me and my wife, like, never know what to get each other for Christmas. So, like, this year, we kind of just, like, picked out what we wanted, but just had, like, the other person order it for us. But, like, we're still going to wrap it and stuff. So, I went and bought um, some Kaido House and some mini gt for christmas obviously i don't have it yet but i'm really really looking forward to that stuff without a doubt kind of house especially is is that your first premium 164 do you have others or oh no never mind you showed me that you know yeah yeah so that's you, like you the only have um yeah that's yeah this is really like the only premium one i have is this one but this i, I mm-hmm. had to have this one though i mean i'm a huge need for speed fan and stuff yeah. so i just Plus, like, just the colorway and stuff of it. It's just, it's super nice, so. It's gorgeous. You need to get this one, Derek. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> but, um, yeah, other than that, but, yeah, with the, um, with, like, the Kaido House and Mini GT stuff coming, I'm really excited for that stuff. Like I said, yeah. I definitely want to kind of focus next year on uh, mainly, like, RLC stuff and then, mm. um, like, the, the premium stuff, too. Yeah, you're going to be really happy with the Mini GT and the Kaido stuff because, yeah, they're so incredibly detailed and they roll. Yeah, that's the thing that sucks. And I haven't tried this one, but I saw that you tried it too. But I can just tell that, like, these wheels are not going to roll. They're so tucked up in there. Yeah. So it just kind of sucks. But, I mean, I'm not, like, really looking to roll these a lot either. So, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I'm just weird when I'm so anal when it comes to that but yeah it's it kind of gives you an appreciation for how kaido was really able to slam and get those so close and they just especially with like the the big wheels and stuff or like the wide wheels that's impressive yeah yeah sammy and i were thinking about buying extras of these and taking the wheels off and seeing if we can do wheel swaps on hot wheels yeah but it might be kind of tricky but we'll see uh, is Title House scale the Hot Wheels? Yeah, yeah, it's like right on par. It's like 100, 110% right on par. Uh, Mini GT here, I'll take the 992s, and you can tell me. Of course, there's going to be a detail difference, but I'll give you that's really close. Yeah, they're really, really, really close. So, yeah. I have noticed 
um because i've been picking up some auto worlds that, i mean granted they claim that they're true 164 scale but like compared to like a hot wheels and stuff like auto world seems like definitely a little bit like smaller than hot they wheels do. yeah they i do. don't think hot wheels is true 164 though either but i don't know if yeah, I don't know. They're re they're really really close. Yeah, I mean all of these, the feel me, the Timothy and Pierre, all of these ones, they're like very very hot wheel size. But yeah, I see what you mean. How the Auto World just looks a little bit smaller. Do you have any um, Para sixty four stuff? Mm. Have you heard of them? Yeah. Uh, I think I might have one buried back here. I think I might have one Porsche Para six four. But it's it's buried back here. I definitely want to pick up their their rough CTRs for sure. Or roof. How some people say roof. I say rough. Yeah. It's R U F. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you think about picking some of those up? I really want the um the yellow para sixty four. Yeah. Cause I saw that one won like best uh die cast or whatever on Lamley last year, so that and I would love to get some RWB stuff as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, if you want to, if you want to throw the, how do you say that? Cast the line. If you really want to cast the line, definitely check out some of these fuel mates. Okay, they're very nice. I mean, if you if you don't mind Porsche, I don't know what else they make besides. I don't Porsche. know. I'm into Porsche for sure. Yeah, but they're resin. They roll. They're just. To me, that's the top dog right there. Is that's metal. interesting that they're resin. Yeah, yeah, hmm. they're so incredibly detailed, dude. It's it's it doesn't make any sense how detailed they are. Nice. Uh, Derek is a true Porsche purist. Hate uh, rough. I I don't. I don't. Maybe maybe some do, but I don't. I know some people despise RWB for what he does. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can understand. You know, it's like you know. You, when you're a, like a heritage enthusiast and you don't want the car, you know, you want a factory version of it, but yeah, not me. I love our WB. <laughs> oh, I love them too. Absolutely. Yeah. I would love to make knock high someday. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I love watching of... him work, dude. It's like, it's, it's, it's like incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Eddie G, any fool can see I'm that baby's daddy. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Uh, random all right <laughs> i think rico's having an influence on him <laughs> as always rico has an influence on me on food, <laughs> <laughs> on food. yeah he was talking about ranch dressing earlier <laughs> uh and speaking to rico he says give me a singer over a over a rougher rwb any day yeah 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 i like them all yeah you yeah, can't get wrong with either, either one one's a crap shoot for me man just I'll take any one. If I'm offered it, I'll take it. Absolutely. What is what are some of your favorite Porsche models? I mean, without a doubt, the um nine eleven GT three RS just because those things in person, like the way they sound, like will send goosebumps down your spine if you've ever heard one in person. Um oh, yes. But um And you know why too? You know why you like it, Jake? Why? Because you're a hardcore Honda enthusiast and you appreciate NA motors that make a lot of power. One that sounds as incredible as that, absolutely. Because yeah. those things are just, I mean, the it's it's awesome. But um, I mean, any like old school, like probably like early seventies, anything like that, like nine eleven stuff like that, nine nine seven. I really like. Um, even like the nine four fours, I think are pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. The uh the, the FC or what is it? Yeah, they kind of look like FC, uh, FC RX sevens. Yep, a little bit. <laughs> it's crazy. That's probably why I like those too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, MDP is asking, do you have any old eighties Matchbox? No, nope. I am not like strictly Hot Wheels, but like ninety eight percent of my collection is like mostly Hot Wheels. So nope, no older Matchbox stuff. Yeah. Yeah, Rico says he likes the 924 Carrera GT and uh, the 936. I do like the Carreras. The Carreras are cool. 
Yeah, I like that new that 718 uh, GT4 Cayman. Ooh, yeah. But, or the Panameras. I love the Panameras. Yeah. Yeah, the only reason why I like that, I'm not a huge guy on Caymans at all, but the reason why I love that one is because it's got a 992 GT3 engine in it. They Ooh, finally they put the right engine in it. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I'd say so. That's just the way I look at it. It's the right engine. All right. Yep. <laughs> if money wasn't an option, would you rather have a GT2 RS or a GT3 RS? GT3, for sure. Especially in that lime grain. Air pound it. <laughs> <laughs> Without a doubt. Lizard lizard green, yep. Yep. Yeah, my daughter said that's her new dream car. Her new her her old dream car used to be a, a Bugatti Chiron, so I would say that's a win for me. The the Chirons are nice, but I think I would probably still take a Veyron. Yeah. Yeah, Veyron. Veyrons are sick. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, MDP, I had a Honda Accord at one point in my 20s. I thought I was Colin McRae, <laughs> and you know the rest of the story by Honda. <laughs> oh, that was me in uh, 17 in my Honda in a snowy parking lot. I thought I was Ken Block, so. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dacast Show Customs, Any? do you have any red lines? Nope. I do not have any, like, old school vintage red lines. The only, like, really, like, old school stuff I have is, um... I have like a, like a probably like one of like those like really old school like blue like kind of leather looking cases full of a bunch of like Lesney stuff, from like when my uh, my mom's dad had them, and stuff like that. I mean they're super beat up and stuff, but uh, I want to eventually do a video on those because they're super cool. I mean very old school and vintage and stuff like that. So that's like really like the only like old school stuff I have. That's cool. I was watching a guy put up some Lesneys on whatnot. That was pretty cool. They you fetch know, a lot of money. In the original box and everything, like just oh, wow. crazy. And I guess they That's used to put, cool. I guess they used to put rubber bands around some of them, like the trucks that had a box on it. They put a rubber band around it. Still huh. got like the original rubber band on it and everything. I'm like, dude, that's crazy. Like from the seventies. That rubber band's got to be dry rotted though, unless it was oh. stored in a really good place. Oh, it's dark, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's it like went from normal like rubber band color, like tannish, to like all of drab. Green, like it's it's terrible looking it was hilarious oh man that's funny yeah you know, don't you dare try to take it off <laughs> no, it'd probably disintegrate you'll disintegrate yeah for sure uh ferris what's up brother hopping off for a second hope everyone is well hope you're well too brother hopefully you're finding some stuff in your parts which is tennessee where do you stay again jake uh pennsylvania western pa pennsylvania. Are, you, are you are you from pa yep born and raised pa's deep there's a lot of people there a lot, a lot of youtubers are there and uh are you close to anybody um i found out that uh what is it ford fan diecast he is only like i think like a little over an hour away from me so that would probably be like the closest one i mean andre he's probably like four or five hours away um chris at neodat um he was only we met up in boardman the one time and um that was only like 45 minutes for both of us to meet up there so i'm, I'm close to a couple of different people nice nice yeah bruce is there too bruce uh bruce yeah bruce there, yeah right? he's on the other side but yeah yep and jeff w david replicas is from pa but he's yeah just, I, he's, yeah he's, he's from uh, yeah he's he's more out east too but yeah whenever i was talking to him on the phone the one time uh we were chatting about uh pa and stuff like that yeah yeah he just stays in canada at the moment yeah <laughs> canada yep i'm surprised he's not in here unless he is in here and i just didn't see his name pop up yet mm, i thought i saw jeff earlier but i'm not sure uh 914 rico putting down all the all the friggin Specs on Porsche. And present WRC. <laughs> <laughs> I take it you're more of a uh, Mitsubishi than Subaru guy. I am. I love my Mitsus. So my, my little brother wants an Evo Nine in the worst way, but I've always been Team Subaru. I want a blah by so bad. 
Yeah, Subis are cool. Like when I when I had my Evos, um, you know, it's kind of like in the midst of that whole STI versus Evo rivalry and stuff. But I never disliked them at all, at all. Like I, I would kind of always go out of my way to try to befriend them a little yeah. bit, you know, just to show them that Evo guys aren't that bad. But you know, sometimes it didn't end up very well. Um, <laughs> But I'll tell you what, the guys that I did have problems with were the Mazda Speed 3 guys because they were like oh, yeah. they were like that little cousin like trying to get in and be cool with the with the older brothers, you know, or whatever. Or, yep. And uh yeah, those those guys would try to race me all the time. And I'd just be like, dude, just get out. I'll blow the doors off every single time. Just <laughs> Yeah, they're I don't know. They're I guess they could be fast, but like I heard that for one, they're super uncomfortable to ride in because it's very cheaply made. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's by far the the car that I regret getting rid of the most is is both of my Evo nines. I love nice. that car. My Especially my one buddy actually has an Evo ten that I think he just put down like four twenty five, four fifty on E eighty five. All white, looks nice. really nice. wingless too. Yeah, yeah, they'll make the power. They'll make the power, no problem. That's it's still on like stock turbo and stuff. He needs like a fuel pump and a turbo and stuff like that if he wants to make anything more. But still, scoot's pretty good though. At all wheel drive. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I think on my last Evo, I put down like three sixty on pump gas and then put ethanol in it and made the four thirty six. I mean, that's how big of a difference. Oh yeah, it makes <laughs> eighty five makes all the difference. Yeah, and it smells really good too. That's oh, absolutely, good. that sweet smell. Mm hmm. That corn well, it smells like sweet burnt popcorn. That's yep. what it smells like. <laughs> uh, Lamont says, I got a 98 WRX STI type RAV Limited. Love that thing to death. What? Get out of here. You... Wow. That's 22B. You, yeah. imported, you imported a 22B? That is crazy. Some money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Because, like I mentioned, I've been thinking about, I've been tossing around the idea of buying a chaser. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah. A JZX100 chaser. I yep. love those cars. And uh, yeah, I'm just diving into it and looking at all the other imported stuff just to see how much it's going for. And yeah, those 22Bs, they're available, but it's going to cost you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's going to cost you. <laughs> Big time. I would love to import like a Sylvia, like an S13 or something. Yeah. I was finding S15s not. I was finding some that were way up there, but I was finding some that weren't actually that bad of price. And I was like, wow, really? Some dude I follow on Facebook actually just listed one because he imports cars. He listed one for like 20 grand with like the tax and stuff. Super cheap. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. I mean, I say super cheap, like I could afford it, which I can't. But I mean, right. the grand scheme of uh, <laughs> import things, I mean, that's definitely cheap. <laughs> yeah. Compared to like R34 GTR, <laughs> D-Spec 2. <laughs> crazy money or a 400 or a g or a what is it the r i found like an r33 400 r oh forget 2.4 million dollars yep i was like holy cow dude yeah that's stupid but just yeah give me, just give r34 me a 34 is definitely my my dream car yeah 713 yes. i recognize this 713 <laughs> yep sammy made that that thing came out so freaking good yeah Oh man, diecast show customs. Old school Toyotas for me. Yeah, there's a lot of good old Toyotas. Two JZ. Two JZ. No. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. Two JZ. No way. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Shmi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's his. Uh, that's his Ford GT. Yeah, me. I like his channel, but he's yeah, just the way that he talks is just uh kind of it's kind of like running nails down a chalkboard a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the little bit of the lisp or whatever it is. I'm just yeah. Like, oh god. Adds character. <laughs> <laughs> Adds character. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Lamont, it's got a built motor with forged internals and upgraded turbo too. Nice. Good deal, man. That thing probably rips. That's crazy. 
Yeah, that is super crazy. Definitely the best STI of all time at 22B. Yeah. It just, it, it just sucks that you, the U.S. never got them. Yeah, absolutely. I, I am a big 22B fan, but like I said, like the the blah blah for me is just like that's ultimate goal. Yeah. Good old blah blah. I like the Hawkeyes. The Hawkeyes are nice too. They I didn't like those at first, but then they kind of grew on me. So the oh. Hawkeyes. Oh, and I really like the hatches too. Yeah. Yeah, I like the Hawkeyes. I think if I was to buy one, it'd be a Hawkeye for sure. Yeah. I just like them. I think it's cool when people do like the sob like nine three conversion on them. What is it? What is it again? They put like a like a sob like nine three turbo or something front end will fit on a Hawkeye Subaru. Really? Wow. Yep. Look it up. It, it's a crazy conversion, but it looks really cool and like a little. It, it kind of looks the same, but it looks different too. That's crazy. Yep. Never heard of that. Never. Never would have thought. Yep. That's crazy. Sean says, I like Shmi. I got as many GT and Tarmac Works GT500. Yeah, I like Shmi too. I'm just saying. It's Shmi. My GT5. This is Auto World, but yeah. Yeah. That's nice. The Shmi one looks really cool too, though. I mean, it looks really nicely done. Yeah. Yeah, that is super nice. Uh, Osvaldo, thanks, guys. I hope to recover if my whole family is in shock. My car got stolen right out of my driveway. Dude, that sucks. I'm sorry to hear it. Oh, wow, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's... That sucks, Osvaldo. Yep. Yeah, hopefully you find it, man. Yeah, hopefully you had insurance, too. Uh, Fair says, no, it's the Saab 92X. It was a joint venture. They were sold by uh, yeah. Wow. Huh. Nice. They were sold by Saab, huh? I did not know that. I just knew that it was a like a, not really like a popular conversion, but a, like a conversion that could be done. But yeah, I knew it was either a nine two or a nine three. But yeah, wow, huh. that's interesting. The, the more you know, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the star. <laughs> I always think about that when somebody just blows my mind with information. The more you know, or that um that gift of the black guy. Going like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then when somebody plays a trick on somebody, I always think of got him. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Rico, uh, Rico says, fair said joint. Okay. <laughs> Jugs are bad. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so is a certain cuss word. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> oh, forget cell for Gotta love it. So what's what's in what's in the works for Strictly Diecast as a channel? What you got coming up? Ooh, that's that's a good question. I like that question. Um, I don't know. I just want to uh, I just want to like keep showing off more of my collection because, like I said, I might still have like two more cases to to show off. Um, you know, go over all my premiums, even though I was doing showcases on those. Um, I have all my bigger scale um, Jada like one. 43 scale call cars that I can show off. Um, just some like other odds and, and stuff. I still kind of want to do a video on, um, on like RLCs and stuff like that, because like, I know a lot of people are like really hit or miss with like RLC stuff just because of like either it's so hard to get them or like the shipping and stuff like that. So I kind of want to like, just give like my kind of like two cents on like the whole RLC thing and uh, just kind of like branch off on like different topics and stuff like that. So nice yeah when you have that whole that whole issue with your mail-in car and everything i think you like addressed it really well and uh okay. yeah that was that was a bummer and i actually that I, was I, i'm not really like suffering the same thing because i um i went on the site and i ordered one of those green gassers just because i missed them when they first dropped and yeah, um, i did too it went fine. Everything's like cool with it and stuff. Bought it and it was shipped. Well, for some reason, it went from being like two hours away from me because I'm pretty sure like one of the distribution centers is in Pennsylvania. It went from being like two hours away to me all the way to Kansas City, Kansas for whatever <laughs> God unknown reason. 
And then finally, it is now back in Pittsburgh and it's getting shipped up to me. But it's just like that stuff like makes me super paranoid, though. You know, I know. it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, you you can ask Tony. I sent when I sent him a car, it went to a, po- a a station right by him, and then it went to Bakersfield, which is way north of him, and then it came back to Phoenix, and then the next day or so, it it was delivered to him. It's like what the hell. Yeah, I just I, I somebody had to have messed up something, I'm sure. Right. But that's like the same thing that happened with that that mail-in car. I mean, it just got like lost or left out in the rain, pretty much, or whatever it happened to it. And it just so it just kind of makes me a little paranoid. And just the fact that like their customer service is just like, well, is the car okay? Yeah, it's okay, but like that's not the point. Like, what if I'm like a super diehard like car collector? Like, then I would be just devastated, you know? Like to me, it was no big deal. Whatever, I shook it off, but um. Just like the return policy and stuff is just like whack, you know, it's just Yeah. But it is what it is, you know. Yeah. They got I've heard of other people suffering the same thing. I've gotten cards and like their boxes not even being taped and stuff like that. So I I know I'm not the only one. Yeah, a lot of people. Because they just put that one little string tape just right over it and call it one little bag of air. (laughs) Yeah, just one little bag of air. But I mean, at least it's in a protector. But I mean, that didn't save yours, unfortunately. Dude, it was, it was yeah. Did you end up? You ended up opening that, obviously. Oh yeah. Yep. It's uh, uh where, yep, right, right there. Nice. Showed that bad boy off. Got a good story to it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's been through hell and back. Now it's yours. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, now I have a question for you. Like, yeah. Considering that you're gonna downsize your collection and like you're gonna take a break from hunting and stuff, what uh, what's your like outlook for 2023 as far as your channel and stuff? Uh, I would like to focus on doing a little more how tos, you know, just to help people that are, you know, because so many people are like thinking about getting into customizing, but for one reason or the other, they're afraid to jump into it. Yeah, you know, like, I mean, that's that's understandable. Yeah, it is. So it's like if we can. There's a, there's tons of videos out there to show you how to do everything you want to do. But, I mean, if we just continue to make videos showing people how to do stuff, then people get a little more confident about stuff and, you know, just trying it. So, yeah, how-to videos. I like to do more and uh, definitely customization. I would like to try to do some full build videos this year. <laughs> that would be really cool, like a start full to finish. Like start to finish type deal. Yeah, a lot of people have been asking me for it. A lot of people are like, hey, man, when are you going to st- when are you going to stop doing shorts and – do a full build video and I'm like, oh, but go just go just going down the street and going to the store is so much easier than filming a week's worth of work. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, but I just got a new phone. I just got an S22 Ultra and I think that'll make it a lot easier. I'm oh, I mean, Derek, you're, you're you're an Android guy. Uh oh. can we still be <laughs> can we still be friends? Yeah, we can <laughs> 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 yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, I mean, you can't beat the cameras on those things. It's insane, though. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really good. There's a there's a couple of clips in this hump video where I was using it, and I was just like, dude, this. Yeah. This makes my, this yeah. Makes my I, I will, really I will nice. give them that. That the cameras is, is like like the hundred times zoom and stuff that you can do is insane. Yeah. Yeah, and it shoots in eight K. <sighs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. That yeah, is. You got me on that. Yeah. Um, Randy says, and speaking of videos, are you still planning on doing a polishing video? I ordered a jewelry polisher from Amazon. Yes. Yes. I, fu- I fully plan on doing a full tutorial showing you how to use it, what compound to use and all that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. It, have you thought about investing in one of those? Yes. Definitely for next year because I really kind of want to make the jump into doing airbrush. I just think it would like – for what I'm trying to do and stuff and like how like I have to like wait for the weather and stuff like that. I think like doing an airbrush setup would be a lot easier for me and like more convenient. Plus I just think that like I could get a better result. Granted, I have gotten pretty good with like spray painting and stuff like that, but yeah, I definitely want to look into a, 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 a polisher for sure. I've yet to polish anything. Do it. <laughs> do yeah, it. Once I, once I do that, it'll be, it'll probably won't ever go back. You're going to be like, holy cow, it looks like an RLC car, but even better. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And plus, uh, you don't have to spend two, three, four hours hand polishing when it just. I couldn't imagine. Just, they're just. Uh, 20 minutes. That's it. Yeah. Yep. 20 minutes done. 
Here that one it. off of Amazon that I think Tony sent me a link to looks really nice. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. That's the one that Sammy and I use. And uh, yeah, Sammy was the one that put me onto that. And yeah, I was like, hey, you mind if I make the how-to video on how to do this? Because I mean, it's not exactly clear cut on what you need to do with it. I mean, people are like, oh, you just put it under the wheel. Well, no, there there is a little bit of a process to it, but yeah. But still, it, twenty minutes versus three or four hours. Yeah, I mean, you you spend the money up front to save you hours in the long run, so you can't beat it. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, Randy, I'll definitely do a how to on that for sure. That lowering, a lot of people have asked me how to do lowering for the longest time, and I always keep saying I'm going to do it, but well, next year you might get a chance to do that. Yeah, <laughs> Sammy. I have to message Derek on WhatsApp to send him my nudes since he's Android. <laughs> hey, so if you send an SMS message on at least Verizon, it comes out really super crappy and granular oh, yeah. like if you do a yep. video. So, yeah, he just sends them to me on WhatsApp. And there's, there's six of us in a group chat, and my one buddy refuses to get an iPhone and the rest of us or yeah, the rest of us have iPhones and his Android completely screws up the entire thing. So it's just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Paco says, I love my polisher. Thanks, Sammy and Derek. Yep. Paco got one. Sweet. Uh, Steve says, is it possible to use a spray booth with a rattle cam painting? I don't see why not. It's, you might have to get a fairly large one or build a large one, but I was gonna say because like a small one, I feel like you'd get a lot of overspray. Yeah, a lot. And there's some paint. There's some rattle cans out there that just shoot it and oh, it yeah. flies. Yep. Yeah, that and one K and one K and two K clear. It's like it's. Oh yeah, I know. Like when I use one K, it shoots out pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lamont, uh, I want to get the S22 Ultra, but no expandable storage is killing me. Just get the 256. That's what I did. 256 gig. I think they might even have a terabyte one. I'm not even, I'm not sure. That's, that's pretty crazy. A terabyte and a phone. That is insane, right? Yeah. I'll, I'll never overuse 256. And if, if for some reason I do, I'll just delete stuff. No big deal. Uh, Mikey first go checking out. I'm out. Stay up, fellas. Catch you next week. All right, Mikey, have a good one. If you, guys like, if you guys haven't checked out Good Day to Diecast, that's also Mikey Fresco. Make sure to check him out. Well, Jake, we're going on uh, about an hour and 15 minutes since we started talking. So I know it's getting that's a little crazy. late. I, I cannot, like I always say in my videos, I don't know how I can get to like. 20 minutes like that but like now it's it already flies. 15. it just flies by dude it's crazy yeah if it, it flies um paco says the buildup of paint with the rattle cam will, will be bad uh on a small paint booth yeah for yeah. sure, for sure. I, I do want to get one more thing to kind of send out a message before we end it here though real quick yeah, sure. Uh, Diecast Show Custom Spray Booth does work with spray cans. Just remove one of the filters. Good to know. Sean, one idea for polishing is to use a polisher buffing wheel on a Dremel tool. Yeah, that, yeah, you can do that. You can do that. You'll probably be going through the pads quite a bit, especially if you're trying to use the compound that we use for that Amazon buffer. So, yeah, you'll probably, you'll probably be flying through them. Uh, Jesse, that's the truth. Time flies when you're having fun. That's for sure. That's for sure. What you got? So I know you mentioned like how, you know, some people say that like they're scared to jump into doing customizing stuff. And I was the same way, guys. I mean, 100% like I kind of got into it a little bit um, last year. But um, I mean, I was just so overwhelmed because, I mean, these things are so tiny to work with. And like, you know, it, it was just it was very frustrating for me to like get into it. But like after watching like a lot of different people and like J Jakarta, especially and stuff like that. I was like, you know what? Like it's, it's like anything guys, like the more you stick with it and like the more you kind of just perfect like your craft at it, I mean, you're going to come up with like your own little tips and tricks and stuff like that. So, I mean, this, 
was like one of my first ever customs. I mean, granted, yes, like it looks cool, but like the wheel doesn't move. It's just this the horrible paint job. Um, I was using really crappy dollar store paint. Um, it just, it looks like crap in my opinion. I mean, it's a cool first custom, but if I can go from making one like this to one like this, I mean, anybody can, you know? I mean, this yeah, one, yeah. it rolls, it's cambered, I mean, exhaust, detailed, everything inside and out. So, I mean, I don't know. I just want to like, you know, for anybody like scared, you know, getting into customizing, I mean, if I can do it, anybody can do it, you know, Absolutely. in my opinion. So, I don't know. Just something to, you know, a little food for thought, you know, I mean, just don't be scared. Just dive into it. And um, definitely patience is key though, without a doubt. Yeah, for sure. 110%. Yeah. That's quite a, that's quite a big difference between those two cars for sure. And that's, this is less than a year, you yeah. know, I mean, this was, probably a little over a year ago like right before i had my son i was just looking for something to do because of like covid and stuff and i was like you know what i'm gonna try it and this is what i came up with and then you know this year this is another one i did and it's you know 1k nice paint job nice wheels so yeah That's i mean good. like i said guys if if just you know if, if i can do it anybody can do it don't be scared and just jump into it for sure yeah yeah, I I always recommend to people, you know, start small, you know, just try try some wheel swaps. Well, and, yeah, yeah. I mean, just definitely detail. get like the the, like the the base like the basics down, but yeah. Yeah, is that your recommendation for new builders is just get the basics and the small stuff down first? Absolutely. And um yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I would necessarily say like don't cheap out on stuff, but like mm -hmm. I guess if you wanted to just kind of get your feet wet i guess like just getting like a little dollar store paint set and just kind of practicing like a steady hand and stuff for like detailing probably wouldn't be a bad idea either but definitely like if you're gonna if this is something you're really gonna take seriously though and try to get good at i mean definitely get nice spray paint cans i um, mean get a polisher get like those helping hand things um nice paint brushes like really fine paint brushes um you know, just, just anything to make your life easier as a customizer, for sure. <clears throat> Absolutely. Very well said. There's Jeff right there. What dollar store oh, there What dollar store paint is the best when you get good at the airbrush? A dollar nail polish will be your best friend. Oh, yeah, dollar nail polish. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Probably, probably for cleaning, I assume. I really don't know if dollar store paint is the best. I mean, I'm not, I, it definitely isn't because I mean, compared to like nice, like acrylic enamel paint, I mean, it just, it goes on super globby and just, it's crap. So I would not recommend using dollar store paint by any means, but like just for practicing, like a steady hand, like I said, I mean, a couple bucks. So, absolutely. <clears throat> absolutely randy says almost uh got my lambo finished for pink tech's inspection just waiting on the clear to cure nice man very nice rico says thrift stores and bargain bins are the best for customizing or custom die cast to tinker on yeah, yeah you always look for beat up castings i mean that's that's what i did i mean i just try to like you know restore them or whatever make them as good as you can yep that's it that's it some excellent information brother appreciate you yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just trying to, you know, like I said, I mean, I was super overwhelmed and stuff whenever I first got into it. But I mean, the the more I did it, the better I became. So I mean, practice definitely makes perfect on them. That's it. I'm no, uh, I'm no honest eye cast, but <laughs> oh please, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. I always, I always like compare. I always make like the Hewitt's reference, like whenever I do my gassers, I'm like, it's not a, it's not a Hewitt's gasser, but <laughs> <laughs> hey, it, you know. I know you guys can't see it, but there's a little imperfection <laughs> right there. It's like <laughs> it's like a little tiny micron. Of a, he's so anal, but man, God, it's just it's a, it's, it's a testament of his quality, man. Uh, not only that, but just who he is as a person. I mean, we should all aspire to be more like him. I mean, just he's a hundred percent like what you see is what you get, and yeah, for sure. I really love him. That's why he's the president. Yep. El Presidente. <laughs> El Presidente. 
All right, brother. Well, I'll let you go because I know it's a little bit late over there. I got some things to do. Too. Yeah, I don't even know what time it is now. I just yeah. I'm getting carried away. <laughs> yeah, it's going on ten thirty your time, I think. Yeah, so two hours yeah, ahead. So yeah. Get some sleep for for work in the morning, but it's definitely been a blast, dude. I mean, definitely thank you. I really appreciate you for uh for having me on tonight. Yeah, man. You're always welcome, man. This is your home and uh oh, you know, we'll definitely get back on here and, and chat it up for some more, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. And one thing I gotta say about you too is uh you really know I don't know what kind of things you've done in the past, like relative to this, but you're really good at speaking to the camera and, 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 oh. you know, putting things together. I, I think you're way better than I am, but that's, I, that actually like that. I mean, like, no, cap, dude, that actually really means a lot to me because I, like, I always catch myself. Like, I know like one of the biggest things is saying, um, like 24 seven, I do say it a lot, but I always try to like keep in the back of my mind not to say it. And like, I always say, um, and stuff like that. And I, I try to like make fun of myself for saying, <laughs> but, um, but uh, and, yeah, and, I mean, I and stuff and things. like something else that, like, I mean, with getting in front of the camera and stuff like that, I just decided to like just jump head first with like exposing myself as a person, you know, on YouTube. I mean, I know some people like not necessarily like hide behind the camera, but like they're just like nervous about like, you know, like, granted, nobody's watching you at the time, but like when you put the video out there, I mean, anybody and everybody can be watching you, so I mean, you really got to kind of like take that into consideration and stuff but um yeah i definitely feel like i've gotten better at speaking but uh, i'm just like a like you can ask my wife i'm a huge people person i mean i just in like any sort of setting i always try to like just make friends and i always like try to like stay like relative with everything just so i always have something to talk about with somebody you know so yeah. i don't know if that kind of helps but i definitely appreciate that though man for sure you're a likable guy to say the least <laughs> very likable well, guy. i really appreciate that yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I've made some really great friendships on here for sure i mean this is definitely an awesome community but um i was actually it's, it's funny you say that like about like talking in the camera and stuff because i was just telling my buddy last night on the way home from the concert about like how you wanted me on your live stream and stuff and um i i've tried it before but i cannot like bring myself to like hold my phone in a store in front of like a hot wheel section and like start talking like you do like i give you all the credit in the world dude for being <laughs> i mean you're like talking to the employees and like just i mean like as soon as you walk in the store like you're rolling and stuff and, like me personally i don't know if i could do that i would just feel like because like you do have people watching you at that point and, like i would feel like all eyes are on me so i don't really know if i could ever do that to be honest so i mean definitely kudos to you for being able to do that well thank you sir but yeah, it's uh, it took some getting used to, and, you know, getting over your your own insecurity in your mind. Like, God, are people going to think I'm weird by doing this? Yeah, and, that's and what stuff. I'm worried about. I'm like, uh. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's possible you might get stopped by a store employee too, and they'll ask you what you're doing. That's happened a couple times, not not too much, but um, well, they probably yeah. know you on a first name basis. I'm sure. What's that? <laughs> so they probably know you on a first name basis. Basis. There's a couple stores. There's a couple stores. Yeah, my favorite yeah. target that I hunt, I hit it every day at lunch. They know me, and, you know, I don't get any special treatment or anything there, unfortunately, but they know who I am. They know what I'm there for, and they're like, hey, <laughs> we got some new ones, or, hey, we didn't get anything today, and I'm just like that. Oh. That's cool, though, because, I mean, it definitely makes it easier for you, though, you know, but. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Just come in. We ain't got nothing. Okay, right back out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You take the walk of shame back because you always like walk so fast to get up there and then you just like take your time walking out. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Inland, I'm a, I'm six foot as well. So, I mean, yeah. It's not really so much a height thing. That's another thing, too. Like, even even just like digging through a Hot Wheels bin, I'm always like self conscious. Like, oh my God, like, they're like, this growing ass dude is like taking through a toy bin, you know, like, but <laughs> I used to feel that way too. I was like, God, what am I doing with my life when I first started? And then I was just like, I don't care, man. I'm going, I'm going for it. I'm doing it. <laughs> well, I mean, I've, I've gotten to the point. Cause like it, if anything, it's like a great kind of like conversation starter. Cause people are always like, Oh, like, did you find the one you're looking for? Like, or, you know, what's, what's the deal? Like, why are you doing it or whatever? So like, I always have like no problem just explaining to people like, Oh, like this is, this is why, or this is what I'm looking for and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah. That's it. But yeah, just going back to filming in a store, you know, it's just, you get used to it after a while. And 
You just well, I mean, you've been doing it forever, so I mean, I'm I'm sure it's like nothing to you. Yeah, just like two, just two years, and yeah, I mean, after a while, I just stopped caring. I was like, oh, really? That's how long you've been doing it? It's two years. I could have sworn that yeah. you were doing it longer than that. Yeah, just just over two years. I think I think right around two and a half years, maybe. But that's it. Yeah. So Man, that's crazy. Yeah, you just you just you just stop caring after a while. You're like, you know what? I want to film this, and uh, I'm gonna be talking to myself and be talking on the phone and. People could take what they want to think, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I mean, it's, I mean, I don't know, though, but, like, like vlogging in general isn't really, like, that, like, new of a thing anymore either, though, so, I mean, I think that kind of helps, you know, it's yeah. not as, like, weird to see somebody, like, you know, talking or vlogging or whatever you want to do or call it, so. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Gary says, I encourage three 18-year-old to 22-year-olds to go for it, and did they ever? <laughs> Nice. That's what it's all about. Just going for it. Yeah. What's up, John? Uh, yes, that is 110 percent true. Ferris is awesome. He is so comfortable talking into the camera and showing his emotions, and he's yeah, he's you could tell he's 110 percent himself and totally. I mean, that's, that's just like Hewitt's too. I mean, he, I mean, a hundred percent of his emotion is going in front of the camera and stuff. So, I mean, absolutely. Some people just, you know, I, I don't know. To me, I guess starting out, I just figured if I show my face now and just get used to it right off the bat, then like the rest of it, it's, it's just going to become easier and it really has. So, yeah. Yeah. That's one thing I kind of noticed too, is, you know, some people that didn't really show their face, they kind of seem like they kind of struggled because they didn't, just jump in they put a toe in by filming but they never showed themselves and um you know people you know you can do whatever you want to do but i, I always encourage people to show your face because then you develop that relationship it's like who are you going to trust are you, are you going to trust somebody you talk in person with face to face or are you going to trust the person that you're texting that you've never seen that's, before that's a really good point i, I mean I yeah do, yeah that's, <laughs> that's that's a very good point yeah i mean it just then it helps you put like a a face to the name, you know? So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Dollstar, every time I watch, go watch a pig hunt video, it makes me want to go find some more cars. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's me too. You're, I mean, you're definitely a big reason why I like always keep on trying to hunt and stuff. Cause I'm like, if Derek can do it and get out there, like I mean, I've definitely, I've even gone before work, like how you do in some of your videos, like woken up a little bit early just to hit a Walmart, you know? So yeah. <laughs> yeah i work way i work way too early now but uh yeah at lunch and after work yeah it's happening <laughs> it's happening all right jake i'm gonna let you go because yeah it's getting late over there and yeah i kind yeah, of I mean, if, uh, if anything next time we'll definitely try to start it earlier you know yeah. or whatever yeah. but yeah it's definitely been a blast though man for sure yeah, thanks for coming on, man. I really appreciate it, especially. Hey, no problem. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Hopefully, <clears throat> in 2023, I'll be able to get something together where I kind of want to do like a customizers guild type live and have like you know four of us just talking about customs and. That's a really cool idea. Yeah, and I would definitely like to have you on that for sure. I think you'd be yeah, great with that. Man. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know uh, Rodney already mentioned. I guess I, I'm on the. Uh, the short list for the the misfits so i mean yes you are yes you are <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we'll see what we'll see what happens and um yeah it's a great group and which actually i think because um you guys are doing like a uh, like a like a builder um like showcase thing throughout next year right like like um like all you guys are like picking somebody else to like have on your thing because I'm pretty sure I got paired with Mad Visions in February so I should be on that one. Oh okay cool cool yeah yeah we we're doing uh we already set up like our assignment for like all the all the events that we're hosting and you know we're yeah gonna, we're yep. gonna make the videos and talk about it and all that stuff. Mine isn't until 2024, so I don't have to worry about anything next year. Yeah, I heard, you, know, you, you can just chill for a year, yeah. But I mean, I, I don't know. I'm I'm a big fan of like what you guys are doing. I think it's such like a cool idea and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a fun group, man. I'm really thankful for Rodney. Put he put together a really good group, and uh, and yeah, we got some big things coming. Super excited. 
Yeah, I'm definitely excited. I, I don't know. I just love participating because it just gives me something to do and like kind of work towards and just to show off what, you know, everybody can do. And Yeah, and that's the whole fun about it is, you know, showing off what other people can do. I'm that's really nice. excited to show off my Christmas one. It was, it's definitely like probably like my favorite gas I've done so far. Nice. <laughs> well, you just spilled the beans and said what it was, but. Oh, yeah, we, I did. Yeah. We still, we still, we still have to envision of what it looks like though. That's the thing. Yeah. I'm not, <laughs> no, that's, that's all you guys are getting from. Yeah. There, if, if you've stayed this long, you're welcome. You, <laughs> you're that, welcome. <laughs> it's all good. That's all I'm I, saying. <laughs> So what were you building for Christmas again? I forgot already. No, I'm just saying. Yeah, that. definitely not a gasser. <laughs> definitely not a gasser. <laughs> no. Why would I do one of those? Not right. do American Muscle at all. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, brother. I'll let you go. Thanks again so much for coming on. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. It was definitely a, a really good time, man. Definitely yeah. appreciate you having me. I'll have you back on. And uh, where, where can people find you again? You can follow me on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok, all under strict. Well, okay, YouTube is just strictly diecast, but the Instagram and TikTok is strictly underscore diecast. So definitely, uh, definitely go check me out if you haven't already. Go show that guy some love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> head, head over to his channel, watch his videos. Great customs, great guy, obviously. So yeah, definitely go check him out. I really appreciate it, man. Without a doubt. Go check out Derek if you haven't already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Derek. Where's Derek again? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, man. Oh, oh, oh. Nope. Right there. Yeah, I was pointing the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks, brother. I appreciate you again for coming on for yeah. with, uh, short notice and everything. And I'll get you back on for sure. Sounds good, man. You just let me know when and where. <laughs> Copy that, sir. <laughs> All right, man. Have a good one. You too, Jake. Take care. All right, man. Peace out, guys. Jake from Strictly Diecast. Please make sure to go check him out. Go check out his channel. Great customs. Great collection. Great speaker. Great guy altogether. Definitely go check him out. Video link, our uh, channel link is down below in the description if you want to check him out or go check him out on TikTok and instagram for sure jake definitely a staple in the diecast community so thanks again jake for coming on really appreciate you brother and hopefully you guys enjoyed um if you are interested in coming on diecast discussion if you're interested in coming on the show drop me an email my email is down in the description below I do have a little bit of a wait list but i like to get some of you guys on for 2023 just let me know i'll be happy to have you um but yeah good stuff good stuff so yeah we'll call it a night guys two and a half hours pretty decent time for live stream and uh, yeah i wish you guys the best of luck out there hunting this week um you know be safe hunt diligently and uh you should find because it looks like stuff's starting to come back around again. <laughs> so thanks again, guys, for tuning in. I will have a hunt video up probably tomorrow evening. Um, if everything goes well, I should be premiering it tomorrow evening. So uh, I'm going to be working on that tonight. So that's what we have to look forward to. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And again, make sure to check out Jake over at Strictly Diecast. You won't be sorry. All right. Oh, no, I missed it. <laughs> Next Level Toys. What's up, brother? <laughs> hey, I, I, I wouldn't mind having you on either. So email me. Email me. Uh, I don't think we're on Facebook or anything together, but I'll, I'd love to have you on the show. So, um, yeah, trying to put together a little bit of a list of, of guests for Diecast Discussion in 2023. So, yeah, if you're interested, hit me up. Send me an email. Let me know what's good. If you're comfortable with doing it, I'll have you on. All right. Um, Dell Star, my pleasure, man. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Good luck hunting out there in, in Huntington Beach. I think that's where you said you were from, which uh, is where uh, Skip Stuckcast is from as well. So maybe you guys know each other. Um, John, you're welcome. 
<laughs> yeah, he finally he finally got the hit of his life or the uh, the week of his life hunting the other week up in Canada. He's thinking about getting out of it, and uh, yeah, he stuck with it, and uh, yeah, he had a huge haul. So awesome, man. Kale and I, yes. <laughs> All right, guys, signing off. Have a great night. I will see you here on Diecast Discussion next week. Um, also, stay tuned. Like I mentioned to Jake, I will be going live on whatnot to start getting rid of all the stuff that I don't have to have. And I got a lot of stuff, and uh, uh, I'm not going to be putting it up for crazy money either. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, if you're interested in hopping on whatnot, you can follow me on whatnot at Honest Diecast altogether, lower, lower, uh, uh, lowercase letters. And uh, like as mentioned, I haven't posted a show yet, but uh, I think that's how I'm going to liquidate my diecast. So uh, definitely check it out. All the proceeds will go back into the channel. Giveaways, customs uh, stuff, uh, hunting, gas money, all that stuff, it'll go into that. Not trying to get rich off of it. I'm not trying to run a business. So, all right, guys, I'm out of here. Have a good night. Happy hunting. Be safe. And remember, it's about the cars. Not the money. Okay? See you guys soon. Love you guys. Be safe. See you next time.